one ki- one friend said, "Yeah, I was in there one time, and I was peeing, and then the ghost of her like lifted my dinghy up. My dinghy started floating in the air. She was pulling it. Like what? I was like what? What? No, I believed it. I'm like what? Like like don't you dare go take a shit, man. It's like you go back there. She's gonna get your dinghy good. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Friday night. It is September the 6th, if you're here live. And that means we are doing commentary number two for this week. And uh, if you can't read, it's Day of the Dead 2 Contagium. We had this brilliant idea. I didn't know. Right? Somebody suggested it. Somebody suggested this. And I'm like, you know what? Maybe we should continue this theme that we've done for a few weeks where we do sort of like a, a general clout, crowd pleaser flick. And then maybe the second one, we do something a little bit more obscure. You know, we did the homegrown classic haunted wing, which turned that out was great. Fun. Yeah. And we did children living dead like last week. And then uh, like, why not do this one? Right. Well, whoever suggests so, I need to kick in the nuts. No, 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 no. So anyway, I'm, I'm messaging river man. And uh, I'm busy too, man. I was watching this thing on my lunch break. I'm like cramming a sandwich in my face. And I I was watching some of it taking a shit, which is appropriate. And I'm just saying, like, I got it done. And Riverman messaged me today. He's like, and you made it seem like in private that it was because you just had a busy day. But today you told me something different, not to throw you under the old bus. You said, it's shit. I can't do this anymore. Like you you had to bail out because the movie's trash. So which is it? No, I'm I'm in the middle of working. And then... All just hell broke loose, and I had I had it on. I was watching it here and there, and then <laughs> man, it was just freaking brutal, dude. Like I was about okay. ready to freaking throw my laptop out the window, man. I was so pissed because of the movie or both, what? both. I mean, okay. this movie didn't help. This, oh god. Well, I'm gonna say right now that Riverman's being a little hard on it because first of all, he said I said I told him I watched the whole thing. I'm ready to go, baby. And I said, you know what? It's actually not as bad. Well, whoever as picked out this dead. trash it didn't real. I didn't realize it was an hour and forty five minutes. The stupid movie. Todd Todd has to have those seventy five minute yes. Walt Disney classics, those animated classics. But anyway, and Todd's like, no, it's worse. I'd rather watch Children yes. of the Dead. Like you watch forty minutes of it. He watched forty minutes. I don't of care. It. I don't think Todd Lemon deserves that as a charm to it. It does not. It absolutely the only charm it has is your nostalgia, our story yes. behind it. That's it. This, That's this it. does none of that. So I'm shutting your butt down. No. Riverman. Shutting your butt down. No, so I, I actually I don't think Riverman deserves an actual opinion on that type of matter because he didn't watch it. I think you have to watch I watched it. I watched and 45 minutes of it. He, no, 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 no. He's see, he's moving the goalpost. He said 40, 40 minutes. Whatever. And I said, it well, doesn't matter. And shit, I said the, the movie actually kind of starts at 45. It actually becomes a movie. Don't get me wrong. It's not good, but it's not as bad as this. Children Living Dead is boring, and it's got worse acting. Every, this movie sucks, too, but everything about children is just worse. I see, it's I, like, I, and I totally disagree. But you don't have that opinion because you didn't finish it. Oh, I didn't finish it. Okay, whatever. I can't have, a, I can't have an opinion of it for watching the first 40 minutes of the movie. I think you can't have an opinion that the whole movie sucks because you watched 40 minutes and you didn't watch the last hour and ten, you know five. I'm just saying, but we're going to watch Who it else tonight. took this we're bullet watch and today. actually watched this movie? Look, look, look. At the end of the day, it's not fair to me because I have to watch this movie twice in a day. Twice in a day! But uh, yeah. anyway. Did you guys so really quick? It, the movie is there for you guys uh, in in the YouTube video link. Whether you're live or you're uh, watching it in post, so pull it up. It's actually on YouTube and it's a high quality version. I think it's the official version, and uh, so it's there for everybody. Really quick before we get rolling, I want to say hi to the people in the chat. What's up, Silhouette? What's up, Gamer Guy? What's up, Tim? Let me see. Tim, when's the last time I saw you, my man? He says, Aaron, what's up? Uh, pff, we just told you. Got to get through another one. Yeah, I do agree with Riverman. I think we have to. I kind of wanted to say it this week, too. I think I'm ready for good yes, movies now. Absolutely. I think we I think we well, the one thing I don't like is and I I think I spoke too soon or I actually was going to tell you, but you had already scheduled a chat. It's like, hey, let's flip them. I didn't want to do I didn't want to do children and contagion back to back, but you had already had them scheduled. I'm like, whatever. <laughs> but like, I think we should have a rule of no, like, obviously bad movies back to back. That's well, just yeah, I mean, I mean, you told me what <laughs> earlier on the week. You're just like, well, I want to I want to do know, I, know. I was like, fine, we'll do it. Okay, okay. So. 
All right, all right. So Todd's going to go full heel on this yes, episode. Yes, confirmed. absolutely. And that's even though he's not seen anything, but that makes a good heel. A good heel is going to be somebody that doesn't give a movie the benefit of the doubt. I am saying the movie's not good, but I feel I have more authority to say so because I finished it. But we'll get into it uh, really quick. What else did you say? Timothy was thinking of Mac and Zach's Jing all the way to and Jack Frost 98 commentaries where they cover some pants and songs. OK, yeah, whatever. Yeah, we could be doing Jack Frost, too. And Jingle All the Way too. I'd, ra- I'd rather, rather do that? that. Absolutely. You'd yes, rather do Jingle All yes. the Way too? Get ready for Christmas. Get ready for Christmas. I, All right. Uh, so ugh. let's let's watch this fun mi- movie. It's a fun film. And uh, we're going to go in three, two, one, play. All right. So Taurus Entertainment. Do you know if Taurus Entertainment Company is around still? They like, still I- own the rights to this movie. And, and, and the producer slash director... I think, oh, or they were a part of it, Taurus Entertainment. So that's why they actually made this movie, I think, to keep the rights to Day of the Dead and Creep Show. Because is this actually like who actually posted it? Is it actually them? Who's Robert Allen McDowell, though? Uh, that's nobody, right? I'm just saying, like, is somebody going to come at me if I actually post this? I mean, maybe. Maybe I should. Yeah. The, the director, James Glenn Dundelson or whatever, Anna Clabble. Yeah, they're they're, mm. they're just they make the shittiest movies, and they pretty much just try to rip off Romero's name. Um, so basically, they're just trying to make money for these movies, and it, it just when I was when I was doing research, while I was actually watching, it started pissing me off, and then I was doing a little bit more research into these people, and I was just like, these people didn't give two shits about it. Oh, just exploitation, yeah, all business, absolutely. I mean, that's. It's part of it, man. If that's their game, that's their game. I mean, why they got? Oh, look at the, look at the way, CGI jeeps. By the way, the first three or four are CGI. I don't even think I noticed. Yeah, and the CGI helicopter that flew over. All right, that, great. I mean, but once I mean, again, that just took it started taking me out of it. And I'll, I'll let you. But talk. once okay. again, I'm just saying. Once again, you'd rather have the the spirit Halloween fat fingers yes. gloves. I, the, mo- the movie's not good. This movie, it, why are we going to compare it to Children Living Dead? I'm just going to because we watched it. We just watched it. It's not a dead movie. It, this movie is, you cannot argue. Once again, I'm not defending it. It is not good. It's shot better. It's at least shot coherently, whereas Children Living Dead really isn't. It's got editing problems. It's got color problems. Uh, it's got continuity problems. That's not real. This one's more forgivable. It's it's vanilla, but at least it's, you know, it's competent enough. I'm trying to I'm trying to get the nice. Yeah, OK, idea. so the fact that they're firing their guns, I mean, it's so fake. It's not even. It I mean, the, the good thing about it's True Living Dead is they actually I think they were shooting, you know, actual fake rounds. This is they're just they don't even have a muzzle. They weren't even they have at, a muzzle. They, flash, they weren't even dude. using. They weren't even using real voices. They were like, <laughs> I talk there's a sniper about. scene here coming up. It's the most ridiculous thing ever where they're pretending to shoot. Nothing's coming out of the barrel. No flash, no nothing. And you just hear hear the gunshot in the background. I'm like, I, I, I really don't like the sound design. Yeah, I don't ridiculous. like the sound design. I was going to say how bad the sound design is <sighs> and the way the guns fire. It's not very good, but so let's kind of go over the story. This one takes place in a mental hospital. Yeah. And and for some reason, Put you in a fucking mental hospital, watching this shit. It was giving me it was giving me Day of the Dead remake vibes, but that's obviously like a real hospital. Well, this is the same uh, company that did Day of the Dead remake. That's yes. crazy. Is yes, it really? I think it's the same producers too and director. I I for for some of the effects, I give them an A for effort. Like it's not all like great, but I give an A for effort, right? If this, I wonder how much this movie cost. Yeah, but, he he was the producer so, of Bloodline, producer of Creep Show Three, which is fucking awful too. I don't know if you ever saw that, but that's really I don't think really they bother watching uh, Day of the Dead. Yeah, Day of the Dead, Bloodline, Day of the Dead Two, Contagium. So they're just trying to milk all the uh, all the fans, all the Romero fans out of yeah. money. Don't get me wrong. It's trash and it's exploitative in its nature and what it's doing. But I'm just trying to give credit where it's due because, you know, there's there's filmmakers here that weren't part of the business dealings. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just I'm just trying to call it like it is. 
and they're in a they're in a mental hospital there's an outbreak we're going to learn more about why the outbreak is an outbreak a little later um but yeah this whole setting is in a mental institution and get ready it's going to do this really fucking annoying thing where it confused it confused me the first time where they do the time jumps yeah but they do it backwards okay okay coming up with like, this scene, I, real quick sorry to cut you off the zombies are walking through the fence they're shooting the zombies and instead of having any sort of see look at this they're firing their guns no muzzle flashes and Brilliant. I mean, it looks Brilliant. so fake and they're, sh they're supposedly Art shooting artistic. the zombies. All they're doing is throwing blood at the zombies, pretending like they're actually shooting them. It's so ridiculous, man. Todd, where's your vision? It's art. It's abstract. There's no art here, man. This you wipe my ass with this movie. In this movie, they throw the blood at the zombie and in this movie. And in this movie, they put the, the time jumps after the scene you just watched. Oh, they and this guy backwards. cuts his finger, so he gets killed. I mean, as you do. No, but no, no joke. Watch. There's gonna be a point though. It's gonna be ridiculous because I, I you watch a movie all the way up to a certain point, but then it goes. F uh, what does it say? Oh, I'll have to see it. It's so backwards. It'll say, "Oh, it says it says four years ago," and what it means is what we just watched was four years ago and the next scene is four years later it's so fucking yeah. confusing and it, this fucking movie duped me because i actually rewound it because i'm like what the what for what what did i just watch and it actually made me waste more of my time because i rewound it just to make sure that it wasn't me and it was and that's the way the whole movie goes it'll keep saying uh two days ago but it's like no just say it right so i don't know who's in charge of that oh it's terrible Yep, so here's Probably. the zombie horde. So th this I think this is the part coming up. Okay, so yeah, yeah, they're firing their weapons. Of course, nothing's happening. Um the zombies look awful, by the way. I mean, they're they they do not even make an attempt. I'm surprised um uh, they didn't try to get Tom Savini on board for this movie or something, throw some money at him, jump on board. I mean, he would have done it. He probably wanted too much money. He's like, oh, after I did that fucking Children Living Dead. No, no, yeah. no. My rates went up, my friend. I mean, 100%. So, yeah, they're storming the hospital, and he has the the uh, virus in that thermos. The thermos. He, he jacked it like they did in Jurassic Park. I'm sure they, when they're writing this script, they're like, oh, yeah, I remember that Jurassic Park scene. Let's do something like that. Oh, and they'll find it 45 years later in a bush. Makes sense to me. It's logic. Yeah. Right. Like, like thrill writing. Yeah. Like a Stanley thermos will be sitting there for 45 so, years. So these mental inmates that uh, all dress like, uh, you know, they just got their wardrobe from like the Sunday donation, Sunday school donation like box. And everybody in this movie, everybody in the movie dresses like mm -hmm. this. Like I, I'm wait, like a doctor comes out and you expect to wear like a Tweety Bird shirt. It, it makes no sense. Everybody's dressed the same. It's odd. And uh, yeah, they find this thing later and it's just like in the creek where these mental institution people could just like sign. I don't know. It's and really I think dumb. this is probably it's the best stupid. part of the movie just because of the guy walking into each room killing everybody. No, bro, that's, you that's, can't say that. You can't say that. You, what you can say is it's the best part of the first best 40, part minutes. Of 40 minutes. Yeah, because you can't say that. Because this movie meanders Man, for the first. You, you get, must be really digging this movie. Oh, here, here's a zombie. No, okay, no. let's see the blood. Let's see him. Okay, yeah, they're just throwing blood no. at him. Watch this. Look, Children Living Dead is a one out of ten. This is a two out of ten. It's terrible. No. But I'm gonna put it a little above children. Absolutely. And so you have this intro which has the action, but for the next like 35 minutes after this, it's a lot of meandering bullshit, setting up characters for way too long. You're getting to you know, they 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 make an attempt to have different personalities in their core group. But they're all cheesy and stupid. But like I said, at about the 45 minute mark, it becomes like the movie, right? The infections and all that stuff. Yeah. So they, yeah, they're going to get infected. And then, and, but at least there's something there. Children Living Dead, you have ha, 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 just kind of like showing up every now and again, howling at the moon and nothing happening, Todd. Don't try and, no, don't no, gaslight I'm, me I'm, into saying I, 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 I think it's, I think it's better <laughs> than this movie. The first, the first 45 oh. minutes that I saw. Just because and these you had Tom Savini are, in it, you had, you know, some eye candy to look at with Tom Savini. And that's about it. This, you don't have a shit, man. 
And these actors are bad, but they're actually not at they're not as bad. They're not nearly as bad. These guys actually come off like SAG actors, just really bad, unsuccessful SAG actors. Uh, like they probably have representation, but you know, whereas the Children Living Dead guys were just locals from Pennsylvania. Yeah. Um. So I I would definitely put Survival Living Dead ahead of this, as bad as Survival is. Survival, yeah, I would too. I mean, like Survival Survival of the Dead is, dude, it's fucking Casablanca compared to this in yeah. the last movie. Survival Living Dead is, you know, maybe a four out of ten. See that that's a movie I can actually sit through. I mean, I, I yeah, I mean, it's not good, but that was great. That was brilliant CGI. I Ugh. love that. That looked like shark. Yeah, this does. Somebody said it earlier in the comments. It might have been Will. It, yeah, it does feel like a sci-fi movie. I don't think this is ever on sci-fi because I remember just directed DVD, but it does have that feeling. But I also didn't have cable when this came out because when this movie came out, I hadn't had cable since pff, middle yeah. school. And this, when this came out, I was working a like a line cook job or whatever, uh, and you know I was just getting by off my CRT and DVD player and PlayStation Two. Yeah, it was it was simple times. But so I don't know. Maybe it, I would have known if it was on Sci-Fi or not. Yeah, see right there. Oh wait. This came out same year as two. Yeah, and I never saw his Return of the Dead sequels in sci-fi I didn't either. either. Yeah. Silhouette confused the fuck out of the audience equals cerebral. Riverman doesn't get it. He will get it. He'll get the artistic uh, integrity that's behind this piece. Not, not, not so. All right. So we got celebrity power in this. We have bootleg Craig Gass on the far right. You guys know yeah, Craig Gass is? He looks just yeah, like Craig yeah. Gass. And then the the doctor has got major Lewis Revenge of the Nerds energy, right? When you see in the doctor, the doctor, it's so confusing. He dresses like the inmates and he sleeps with them in their bunkhouse. It's so oh, yeah. weird. And they make they there's a throwaway line a little bit later. Like, I've never I've never seen a doctor so compassionate. You sleep with them. And I'm like, and I, at first I was getting a little sus. Like, is he fucking these patients? What's well, then he check one for STDs or something. Yeah, they they do that. I mean, as you as you do and should. Uh, but this uh, guy with glasses, just I mean, he's a total creep, dude. Look at him. Yeah, he's like a uh, weird Plato file, uh, Tom Arnold. Yeah. And then, I, what's so funny is at first I wasn't. It took me a like a half a second to realize that this is a mental institution. Yeah. At first, I'm like, when it jumped, I'm like, wait, is this prison? What kind of prison gang is mm -hmm. this? Where you have like this 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 one guy's reading. And they're all of different, like, you got, this guy would be with a click. He'd be with all the brothers. Yeah, you know he would yeah. be. And then one of these guys would be, this guy looks like an Aryan brotherhood a guy if I ever oh, saw absolutely. one. But then I realized, then I realized it's like, yeah, they're a loony bin. Yeah, it took me, same. I mean, I, I was thinking of saying that that was prison gang or some sort of prison. And then they. But as soon as they, as soon as they get up and go by the creek and they start, oh, I'm not all better. Oh, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and this guy, first of all. Jared Fogel. That is Fogel, man. A hundred percent. And but no, they for some reason the main guy, where's our main guy? That's our main guy in the right yeah. there talking. He's got a love interest. He's another crazy that's in there. It's like a chick with short hair. She kind of looks like Lori Petty. Um, but anyway, he's got psychic powers. I, I don't know where that comes from. He's gonna they're, they're about to go by the creek here because I guess they're cleaning up. I don't understand this mental institution because these aren't I wasn't at all under the assumption that they were violent criminals. Well, I feel like it was a voluntary, like, cause he kept saying like, Oh, you can get out. You know, you just need a little bit more help and all that shit. So why are they like being put to work? And they, that's why I thought they were prisoners. Cause they look like they were doing community service type stuff. I just don't understand it. And then you have like the crooked guard that's like the, in all the prisons and he's all like grapey and stuff like that. And I'm like, what, what is this? And uh, but they find this thermos. It's funny. It's been there for 40 years and they never sat there in eight before. It makes yeah. no sense. The seven up yours guy uh, finds the thermos and they're looking at it. And this is when I realize, oh, OK, this is not a prison because he kind of seems a little special. Like, oh, it's my treasure. Oh, God. And, that's so um, yeah. He's like, oh, I don't care about what's inside. I just like the I like this one, this treasure more. Yeah, I want this fucking Terrible, gnarly ass dude. thermos. I I have I have that simplest. same thermos. Yeah, I mean it's fate. 
Okay, and so our psychic, he establishes he's got weird some psychic ability. He's like, don't open it. It's bad. I could just tell it's bad. He's like, oh, he kind of gets these like Alex Mack flashes mm-hmm. to his heads. And it makes no, they don't really explain it. And that's going to come into play a little bit later when they all become zombies. They're all like connected, I think, to him, hive mind. Like he talks. It's like, it makes no sense. Oh, zombies they don't... talk, which makes no fucking sense either. Well, they're more like humans. They're like human zombies. Yeah. I mean, Todd, why, why doesn't it have to? There's no like right way to do a zombie. Everybody's got different well, ways. Well, are you trying mean, to rip oh, off Romero, Todd, Day of the Dead? Todd must really love zombies really because I, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, that's not a real zombie. Like, there is no fucking real zombie. Well, they're obviously trying to steal Romero's Day of the Dead. So why not try to make it like Day of the Dead? Bob would have ended up having a conversation if they would have had more time with him. Well, he did talk, but I mean, he mumbled, but. But he would end up having a full blown conversation like these guys. He gave a little bit of evolution time. God, you don't no. think? Hello, Alicia. <laughs> uh, yeah, they found the T virus. That is what it kind of is like. Yeah, it, the the plot is stupid. Like, oh, they just find well, this and the actual virus looks like some sort of fairy dust or something that comes out of it. It's so dumb. Yeah, that's that's really odd. Um, they're like looking at it like ooh, I mean they they didn't want to put like, any budget into that. I mean that doesn't make any sense to me. I mean those kind of special effects cost nothing with modern software. I mean this movie's kind of older. Maybe maybe it cost a couple of bucks to do that back like 17 years 2005? ago. 2005? No, I mean that was the height of CGI, man. <sighs> but was it cheap for regular people to do yeah, it? Yeah, did. That's 19 years ago. Yeah. I'm just saying, could guys like me and you do it? We could do it now. There's programs that we could do yeah. that. We could do that. I'm no sure. Problem. I'm sure they, After they, Effects was there. 2005. All right. So we we have this guy. Uh, he's like the – it takes a minute to kind of realize who everybody is because everybody's plenty. Like I said, even the doctor is dressing like them, and it's confusing. You don't know who they are. And then you have that one guy. He's like the – right there. That uh, Who does it look like to me? He kept giving me vibes. It looks of, like um, somebody from The Office or one of those shows. Oh, he reminded me of somebody, and I can't. Peter Stormare. I mean, not really. Mexican Peter Stormare. Peter Stormare Romano. Oh, I, th- I thought you were talking about know. the the guy that gave the flowers to her. No, I'm talking about this guy that's the. Uh, oh, freak. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's like Latin Italian Peter Stormare. I don't know what he is. He reminds me of a, an amalgamation of people. But she looks like Tank Girl, yeah, like bootleg yeah. Tank Girl, bootleg high tension girl. And the goth here, and then you have uh, God. Who, I have no idea what. I, look, so they're establishing that I don't know what's wrong with her, but I think she's like she's like a cutter. She says that the other chick that you see back there, like the the. The, the Latino chick right there that's sitting on the table. She's like a nympho. Oh, yeah, and she's yeah, like a pill yeah. popper. And uh, they make cracks of how she just fucks everything that moves. And But she's a cutter. I mean, I, I don't know. I, I She's in a psych ward because she pill pops and she likes to fuck. Shouldn't she be in rehab? Yeah, she wouldn't be thrown in there nowadays for that. Because that's pretty much everybody. Because she isn't really... She doesn't really seem crazy in this movie. I mean, she's all about getting them pills. Even when the zombie stuff's going down, she just cares about getting in the medicine cabinets, dude. So this is, this is a million dollar budget, which is crazy. Oh, it's twice the budget. Wow. As Children Living Dead. That's insane. I I would have guessed that this movie cost maybe half a mil like Children Living Dead. Uh, th- this movie, I don't know where the money went either. Maybe, you know what? Maybe the money went to... No, I don't know where the money went. At least you could find Children Living Dead at Best Buy. Yeah, this was at Best like, Buy. Yeah, this is it? the reason I didn't well, buy this movie was because the Children Living Dead. Oh, because you already been you know learned learned yeah. once. Well, yeah, I don't know. This this movie has maybe this this movie has a anchor cast. bay anchor bay put this out. These actors all probably made scale. See, the doctor in, the, in these angles, he looks like Lewis, dude. Like when he laughs yeah. and stuff and that schnoz. Yeah. And when he starts like becoming a zombie later, he really looks like Lewis. I mean, I don't know. I just found it kind of drags, man. I just. 
Oh, th- th- this first no, it does. This first forty mi- the first forty fi- minutes of the film, like where you tapped out. That's what I'm saying. Like right when you said you tapped out, three minutes later, it actually happens. I'm not saying it's a good movie, but it's like stuff is happening. Yeah. You know what I mean? Stuff is happening. Like I I didn't find it. I mean, I was playing guitar and stuff like that, and and while I was watching it, so it's like I didn't have a hard time doing that too and listening to it. It wasn't, it wasn't the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. I've seen stuff that's just kill me. You know, it's just you can't, you can't focus on it. You know, I, I'm trying to pick apart because this movie's do this movie does so many weird things right. It keeps my interest because I'm like, why the fuck do they do that? Like I said, case in point, the time jumps. Like, yeah, what did I just see? Like, what is this? Okay, so the release of this movie, a uh, 10-minute promotional reel screen in 2004, Fantasia International Film Festival, where it was not well-received. Of course not. It played in the 2005 London Fright Film Festival, after which Stars and Anchor Bay released the special edition DVD, October 18, 2005. Well, those people at that festival were haters. Hey, you know what? That's actually right. That's a good point. Um you know, K- Silhouette's calling everybody Kmart. Kmart. This movie this movie reminds me of Kmart because I feel like this is the kind of movie you'd see at Kmart mm-hmm. all the time. And everything looks like Kmart. It looks like it was shot in a Kmart. They probably probably cleared out the aisles of a Kmart and called it a mental institution. And I didn't know this. Gamer Guy, you need to be on these more often, man, so you spew the facts. Gamer Guy dropped some facts on us about the last film, but apparently he's saying they were going to do a sequel that's called Day of the Dead 3 Epidemic. And what happened? Well, they did Day of the Dead re- remake, and they did Day of the Dead Bloodline. Uh, oh, you know what's so funny is I totally forgot Bloodline and Day of the Dead remake were different. I forgot there were two different movies. We did the Bloodline commentary, and that no, was bad. no, we did Real the Day of the because I I was there for Day of the Dead, I believe, the one with uh, I thought we did Mina the- Savari and is that the one? Maybe I'm getting it backwards. That's the one. Yeah, we did then. bloodline I don't, is. I don't think we did bloodline. Well, I don't know. It's all the same to me. But you know, hey, they. I if I had to wager, I would say they made money on this, because you know they they had to have sold enough. V, you know, curiosity copies on DVD to all the horror. Nerds. Yeah, yeah, they. And, it's like and they, they, you know, I I feel like this feels like a half million dollar movie, but if they spent a million, I think the fact that they look, they're going to keep making these movies because you said they own the IP, they own the rights to, so they're going to milk it even more. But if they didn't make money on this one, why would they arguably spend more money by doing Day of the Dead with Ving Rhames, Mina Savari? These people actually were names at the time. Even if they were like kind of like past their prime, they had to have cost more money than all these actors. So you would have thought the next thing they shit out would have been worse. Well, I'm willing to bet they, they did it to hold on to the stuff. IP. So basically they probably just... But, because they're still making, no. they have Creep Show too, so they have the first Creep Show, so they're making money off of Creep Show releases and whatever, and then Day of the Dead. But you're just agreeing with me, so because they hold on to the, they have to hold on to the IP, so they got to keep making content to hold on to it. So regardless, they were going to keep putting out Day of the Dead like related shit. But if this movie didn't make money, why would the next thing they exploit? have an arguably bigger budget and bigger actors like Nick Cannon and Ving Rhames. You would have thought that, okay, we didn't make money on this, so we're going to keep milking it because we own it and we want to keep it. We have to spend less on the next one. I'm saying they scaled up. What what was So this had to have made money. I don't know. Maybe was Creep Show? I'm trying to think. Did something blow up with one of these? Because I couldn't imagine this one. The biggest one that I think had the most exposure was the Day of the Dead, Nick Cannon, Ving Rhames. Okay, yeah. That was that was everywhere. That was in red boxes all over the yeah. place. It, it was it, – because when that came out, we had just kind of started Netflix streaming, and Redbox was really big. And it was like the early days of Netflix streaming. Redbox was all over the place. Everybody everybody I knew, you go over to their apartment, they had a Redbox they yep, had returned. Yep. They had Redbox. It was huge. So it was probably timing, but – for that reason alone like it was just everywhere and um you know and it's just as bad but you can tell it has a bigger budget just from the the, the cast yeah you gotta pay the cast i mean I, it just did it just it just it's not good but it had a bigger budget i'm not saying 
Nick Cannon as Tom Cruise, but Nick Cannon's still yeah. a name, and Ving Rhames was still a name, and Mina Savari, she was way past American Pie, but she was still a yeah. name, and th- none of these people are names. No, no, not at all. These guys probably all worked for scale. Probably. I mean, it's possible they made a little above scale, but I, I do, they're, maybe the main people made, like, a grand a piece, but, I, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if these people were making, like, a couple hundred bucks a day. You know, maybe maybe some of them were making a few grand. I don't know, but you know, it's just whoa. Okay, what the production? Okay, so Day of the Dead Two Contagium uh, completed shooting Los Angeles April two thousand four. The co director said the production has been kept quiet in order to avoid media attention while filming due to Brooke Hogan's involvement. Whoa! In this, that's what that's what that's what IMDb is telling me. Wait, contagion. Yes. Are you sure it's Brooke Hogan? What did Brooke I don't Hogan know. do? I'm going to do some research here. Wait, was she in this in the last hour and I missed it? Uh, I don't know. I'm going to see what the involvement is okay. for with Brooke Hogan. Yeah, that that was was uh Hogan knows best even on the air when this came out? I don't uh I don't know. Let's see. Mm, I mean, nothing's coming up. Maybe Gamer Guy knows because he's pretty. Oh, Brooke Hogan as the nurse was that Brooke Hogan? Right there. It did. Wait, hold on. I, that I I recognize there was a chick. No, that's no. Not her. Maybe she was one from the beginning. But, you know what? I think there was a chick that kind of reminded me of of her, but it I didn't. There's no way it would have that been her, one. But, but it, I guess it was. Let me see. No, not that one. It's not that one. I'm looking at the actual cast here. I mean, if she was in this, she's not listed anywhere. She must have taken her shit off. I mean, she's a smart girl, but I don't see anything about Brooke Hogan. It says, um, like, if you go on. She want to take her name off of this, but she was in two-headed shark attack. She want to keep her name on that. Was she in that? Yeah, I'm looking at the yeah, IMDb. So she she's nowhere to be found on the day of the day two contagium Wikipedia, but she's actually, you know what? They mention her. It's confusing. Brooke Hogan is nurse. Uh, yeah, I don't I don't know. Well, I'm gonna keep an eye eye on it because I, I I'm starting to Mandela effect that I did see someone that kind of had like a Hogan esque face. You know, that face that looks like a foot. Yeah. Yeah. So, so what you're saying is you don't want my copy of this now? If hey, I find if it? I can get Brooke Hogan to sign it, maybe. Yeah, she should be doing cons. She she could sign it with her uh, red lipstick. Just kiss the DVD, dude. If if the Osbournes are doing cons, why can't the oh, Hogan? I dude? I'd, I'd love up. to go see the Hulkster, man. I would do. Do you want to? I but I like the Osborne family more than I like the Hogan. Oh yeah, family. no, I, I agree. like Hogan. I agree. But I don't. I think his son Nick's yeah, a fucking yeah. douchebag. I think his daughter's intolerable, and his wife. Well, first of all, they're divorced. It'd be funny if they start doing appearances yeah. together. And the wife's there. She's like on the other end of the table. Red hair guy looks like live action Fry from Futurama. God, they wish this was Futurama. Hmm. Todd, Todd probably doesn't watch Futurama because he never no. watched Simpsons either. Futurama is great. Yeah, I don't know. So far, I haven't seen Brooke Hogan, but we're gonna find out. Did, w- would she have been at the beginning? Do we miss her? I don't know. We, we gotta find Brooke. Well, we well the thing is, we've already seen everybody. Everybody yeah. you're seeing in this movie is everybody that's gonna be in this. You know what I mean? Like it, it, we're in modern day. This is everybody in the cast. They're not gonna introduce new people from here. So if she is in the film, it was the very beginning, but it it might not have been. The thing is, is I think I would have recognized her. Like I like without a doubt. Like well, that's Brooke Hogan. Yeah. Brooke Hogan is a nurse. Oh. Huh. So when when is that guy gonna like uh, take one of these big titty nurses to the hot tub that can boil your skin off, dude? Yeah, give me some Halloween um, too. Yeah, energy. I mean any, anything would be better than this. Good movie. Let's try to open up this canister and steal the guy's canister and uh... yeah, you know what the production value looks like? It looks like I'm watching Beast Beast Wars yeah. or like uh, a An- An- Animorphs, Animorphs the yeah. TV show, or yeah, or maybe like one of those power like one of those fo- Beetleborgs. Oh, this is giving me big, big Beetleborg energy. Yeah, it looks like uh, it looks pretty cheap. Yeah, Sci Fi Channel. the The main guy, 
in certain angles looks like Chris Kattan, but he's I'm not a one insulting. I love bad. Chris Kattan, man. I don't. He he's sucks, funny. Dude. He's a hack, dude. You ever see that guy in an interview? He's not funny. Oh, I'm sure he's not. But he was I mean, like his performative stuff is different. He's like Seth Rogen. Seth Rogen's not funny no. at all. And is it like in real life? He's just not. He thinks he and Chris Kattan. Mm -mm. And, look, he looked like Lewis there, dude. Like upshot when he's talking to him. Look at him. Look, that big schnoz. He's got blonde hair, but that's Lewis. OK, and you have uh, Craig Gas. Why? I get it. They're crazy. We're just going to rock chalk everything up to why would they do this? Why would they do that? Oh, they're crazy. It's a loony bin. We wrote yeah. it in a loony bin. They took the easy way out. Like, there. Why do you have? Okay, here's the they fairy really dust did. or whatever the hell it is. Fairy dank to dust. Yeah, unleash the virus. Yeah, Animorphs. That's why. <laughs> uh, why do, I was like, why do they want what they think is old soup in that thermos so bad? Exactly. It makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. And maybe Lewis here. Uh, th maybe he just says it in the next couple because there's gonna be a bit when they find out what it is it's a virus and they're saw they have to go on quarantine uh the guy who opens it he like apologizes he's like i shouldn't have opened that thing and then lewis goes hey if you didn't open it i was gonna open it I'm like hopefully you're saying that to make the idiot feel better because <laughs> why would you open it like you don't even have the pass of oh i'm crazy oh <laughs> it makes no damn sense and they're saying this when they're all infected i'm like you motherfucker oh, i'll kill you like, no, don't beat yourself up too bad. Like, I would have done it. <laughs> so are there any of these characters you, you can give a shit about or what? Because I, I never. No, okay. I, I think they're, they're terrible. No, no, I don't care about any of them. Any of them. The only place that I give them a little bit of credit is over Children Living Dead is there's an attempt to make everybody different. Stand okay. out, right? Like the, the, the nerd guy with the glasses. He's very nerdy. He keeps quoting dorky sci-fi movies from the 50s. You have the main guy who's like kind of the love interest crazy guy. The doctor. You got the the token black guy. It just, it, they all have like different, and you have bootleg Craig Gass. They all have different personality things about them. So I'm just trying to give them credit there. I'm not going to beat on every aspect of it if I can't. I, that's the difference. That's what separates me and you, uh, Todd. That's what separates me from the animals, if you would, is I try to find the good. I feel like everything you can find. Stuff I'm glad like. I have really empty. Struggle to find it's just me. If you struggle to find anything good out of something, that tells you. Like that's is that not Lewis, dude? Eh, eh. Little, a little bit, those, a little bit. When he gives like he snarls his nostrils and stuff like that in certain up, he gives it. He gives it to me. He wishes you him. Was Caradine, man. You you dye his hair black and put glasses on him. That's the guy. Why why didn't we meet him when we went to that last con here in Arizona? I don't think he was there. I know Ogre hey, was. was there, but was was Lewis there? Lu, Lu, Ogre, Lewis, and Brian, uh, the the Asian guy. They were all oh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I don't know. They were all there. And, and see, I like I like the the Brian guy because he played Leonardo in yeah. the TMT ninety. But and I was I mean, well, money's a factor, right? We we were hell bent on like, well, I'm going to do Lance. Yeah, you did Lance, and thing. I did. Uh, um, what's her name? You chick from Re Return, uh, yeah, Return of Living Dead. Yeah, Return Living Dead three. Yeah, you can't just spend all the money there, but yeah, Carradine didn't look like he had. He just didn't look. He was older, and he had like I'm not saying he looked bad, but he's older, and he had like long, wavy salt and pepper mm -hmm. hair, and he had like a beard. He was hardly recognizable. You know what I mean? Like he. he I wish I would have got Don he, Gibbs like, autograph. That's the one I wish I would have got. Oh yeah, Don, I if I had, I do kind of regret that because it's like I. That was a pretty good year because I would I should have got like a blood sport um eight by ten. I would have liked that. We could get a little video of him oh. like um as I smell yeah, nerd. That's what his name is. Ogre, you asshole. <laughs> yeah. What, what? Uh yeah, no, silhouette, you're hundred percent right. That guy was bootleg Matt Froer. That's a hundred percent who I thought that evil doctor From was. Scrubs? Yeah. No, Matt Froer. He played uh, Matt Max Headroom, and he's like super glue in uh, what's it called? Uh, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. The neighbor, super glue. The dad, Zach Braff is the one I was thinking. Uh, Zach Braff ripped off the guy with the hair, little tail on his hair. No, I know who you're talking about. That that doctor, he's like kind of the evil guy. He's got like the agenda because once they find out that they that they found that virus, you know. 
I'm pretty sure it's him who calls in the the big guns, the military, and he's like, so if, if they're in a loony bin, why why wouldn't they have their own rooms? I mean, why wouldn't they be locked up in padded padded cells or whatever? It doesn't. It it, it looks like it's more like a halfway house. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And why is the doctor? He's like sleeping in the bunk beds with him. It it gives me vibes of like when I went to summer camp uh, in in Elkhorn. We went to summer camp in the fifth grade, and we're all sitting in the bunkhouse like that. And I remember I'm sitting right above my principal. And he's like, I got scared, right? Because we were telling yeah. ghost stories in the night. I was the most scared I've ever been in my life. And like, I have told this story, but my friend Tom, he was like across the the cabin or whatever. And I'm and he's telling this. He's basically reciting, uh, the Pinocchio's Revenge movie that was the oh. time, and it scared the shit out of me, like Mister Marvel's yeah. energy, like because you hear like the trees outside. It's dark and you're far from home. And then I I remember it was like. You know, we were told it lights out, time to go to bed. And then I'm like, I don't want to go to bed. I'm like, we didn't, fi- we didn't finish the story. I'm like, is, Miss- is, is Pinocchio out there? And uh, I remember breaking the silence and I'm like, hey, hey, Tom, th- you, you don't think Pinocchio is still out there, do you? That kind of thing. And I remember like, <laughs> you don't think he's out here? And then I remember my principal, Mr. DeBerry, he was like, Aaron, go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and I couldn't go to sleep, dude. I'm like, yeah, but Pinocchio. I'm like talking to him like he's like my bunk mate. And didn't were, did, were but, you in the bunk beds that like the ones with like the, the springs that like uh, it like sunk in, so you felt like the person like a, on top of you was just gonna break and like come through the. I don't I don't really recall that much detail, but it's possible. I remember the smell of those bunk beds when we went camping, like or to camp and stuff like that. Summer camp, God, everybody just farting in the middle of the night. Stunk so bad in that fucking place. Sweat socks, <laughs> man. You had all like thirteen year old boys stunk up the place. No I, deodorant. I, Ugh. And we had we had like a it, this. It was weird being like in the fifth grade and being on this experience because I had never done anything like this. And in this in this like bunkhouse that we all stayed in, including our principal, like our yeah. chaperone. Like we're gonna get into trouble. We had like a, a shower, a community shower, and it was one of those things. Like, okay, everybody take mm-hmm. turns, like one shower, but there was no curtain. And like being five, this is like pre locker room stuff like that. It felt weird. Like I don't, I don't like, like we're not gonna come back there. Like, but I was creeped out by principal, dude. And it's, it was weird. It felt really uncomfortable. It's different when you're like older and it's like ah, oh, lo- okay, coach, <laughs> like whatever. But like, f- you're like in the f- elementary school, dude. Like I don't want to get naked. In front of my friends, much less my principal, who, by the way, Mr. DeBerry, I'm calling him out. Uh, you know, he used to he used to come in during the winter time, like where I, where I went to school. I already said earlier, I won't say it again. It was a different dis- district than you. Uh, the the school was an open floor plan. Yeah. Like it wasn't, you know, it wasn't hallway door hallway door. It was all open. It was very modern and is it, you know very accessible. In the wintertime, we'd be like in our classroom, and then Mr. DeBerry would come in from the cold, and he would take his hand, and he would put it down the kids' shirts and feel us and feel our backs and go, woo, make us do that. And now, as like, and first of all, I thought it was weird then, but now I'm like, that's really weird. When I think about it now, this, this middle-aged guy putting his bare hand down our shirts. Jesus. And, and copping feels. Kind of like my day, my the guy who ran my daycare. I used to have to go to his office and sit on his lap while he smoked his pipe. <laughs> yeah, he's he's some did, did he's he some pop, old did, guy, did, dude. Did, his name is Mister Howell, dude. Just like Mister Howell from uh, Mister Mister yeah, Howell uh, from yeah, Gilligan's Island. Gilligan's yeah. Island. And he used to sit there. He's the owner. Was he like? Let's, he, let's like, talk about yeah, the pretty much. Pop, he's pop, like, love me. oh, tell me love about me. your day. You know, he, he has me sitting on his lap. I was probably like six years, six years and, old and, or something and, like that. And you keep, Five and you're talking. Old. And as you're talking, you feel it raising underneath you. Yes. Keep going. Keep I, going. Yeah. Keep he, and the whole, the whole room is filled with like pipe smoke. You just smoke like one of those pipes. Yeah. Yeah. That's really, yeah. Well, so, all right. I guess it's a uh, admission hour. So uh, <laughs> I had another teacher to see that was weird too, dude. Now you say that. I, I remember being in Kentucky, same small town where I rented Han and Ween and all that stuff, and I have those like movie fond memories. Oh, this guy's like choking up all that mm. cum. It was just, but we just skipped it where it said four yeah. years ago, but it's four years later. Cause that, that's what confused me, by the way, is it said four years ago, and all of a sudden everybody's all sick. I'm like, wait, what? How why are we going back? We were sick four years ago. And they and they and they got themselves in the situation again. They yeah. deserve this. 
But then I realized, like, no, it's just it's just backwards. And they have all this cum all over their face. But it's funny. You know what it looks like? They just put, like, yeah, Elmer's yeah, glue yeah, on their face. Yeah, yeah, it is Elmer's and glue. And they're, and they're just peeling off the Elmer's glue. Like, our skin, what's going on? Our skin, it's terrible. Man? It's Elmer's glue, man. This is about, this is about the um, time I uh, I turn it off. Yeah, this yeah, this would have been the time when they were peeling off the yeah. Elmer's glue. <laughs> terrible, dude. It's so stupid. I used to like peeling off Elmer's oh, glue. Oh, I did, dude. yeah. Back in elementary school, yeah. You know, hey man, that that look, that's where their money went. They got all those like uh West Borland uh pupil like eye things. Mm, mm-hmm. Those contacts, right? But they raided the set of Babylon five and like, hey, can we borrow your eye things? No, but anyways, this guy uh when I went to in Kentucky, this was a totally different type of elementary school. Very old. I wish I could go back there. Very old, very rustic. This is the one where I you know, I've told you guys, have I told you guys the story about the haunting of Mrs. Jenny Roger? Have I, I told don't you that story? You can ask him in the okay. chat. I don't, I don't remember that. I, I think I think I maybe told the story when uh, Mac and I and Zach did the the paranormal yeah. episode. <laughs> uh, but I went to this really old school. It was called Jenny Rogers Elementary, and small town. And you don't realize how small a town is until you grow up and realize, wow, there's like nobody in that town. But because everything's big to you when you're a kid. But this school had lore, and I was the new kid because I was always the new kid, and. The elementary was Jenny Rogers Elementary School, and all the kids, the, the lore around the school was, oh, Jenny Rogers, yeah, she uh, she died. Oh, yeah, death. she's dead. She's dead. Your friend Josh, yeah. your friend Jenny Rogers, she's dead. And anyway, she she haunted the school, mm. and she was the namesake of the school. And, and this school was scary, dude. It was like a nightmare in Elm Street mm. School. Very old, very long, echoey hallways doors it was it's really cool now that i think about it. i wish we could go back there but super if these walls could talk very creepy and the bathrooms they had no light they had like little you know it's like little lights little windows that are like yeah prison, yeah like up up, up like, near the ceiling little okay. right there. like basement windows almost. like you might yeah yeah but they're like really tiny maybe like uh six inches long yep. and like a couple feet wide at a reach it almost you'd almost think it had bars on it but it didn't and just enough for like light to creep through there was no lights hmm. in this bathroom all your light came from that little crack of natural light so it felt like the boiler room in nightmare on elm street but it felt like a prison yeah. bathroom i felt like i was going to go in there and get shanked and and so when and they didn't have they didn't have urinals this is how old the hmm. school was they had troughs. oh yeah yeah i remember troughs we had those too yeah it was like a trough, and I had never seen a trough before. So that was all been kind of weird, like going in the trough with your buddies and like you just whip your dick out. We had those in high school, dude. Like... Mil- uh, they did. They had troughs. Yeah, I think uh, early on, I think freshman year, in some of, in some of the bathrooms they did, but then they remodeled later. But I don't remember anything about yeah. that. But one by anyway, Miss, Miss it was our art teacher's class it used to have that. Oh you know? uh, yeah. Well just trying to paint the picture it was really creepy like a prison anyway so you walk in and you, you see the troughs okay and then then behind the wall that the trough is on you have to go around the corner is where the stalls were mm-hmm. and there's like a one or two stalls and that's also where the light was coming down so that just tells you how dark it was there was like a wall too like blocking where that little bit of light was coming through everybody i was so fucking scared to go take a number two because that's what the kid they said well that's where she gets you if you go in that bathroom alone that's when she strikes and don't you dare. it's like and, and so they said um i was afraid to go back in the stall because it was just scarier because you're like away from the door and you're like going around a corner and it just feels like every horror movie in the world it's like if i get stuck on the pooper and i'm in a stall I, i'm yeah. vulnerable to whatever jenny rogers might do to me i can't just like zip up and run when you sit there and suck your Maybe thumb like, dude yeah, like, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, mm, mm. yeah, but uh <laughs> Miss Jenny Rock for a good yeah. time be here now. Anyway, this is what the kids told me. The kids said one ki- one friend said, Yeah, I was in there one time and I was peeing, and then the ghost of her like lifted my dinghy up, my dinghy started floating in the air. She was pulling it like what? I was like, What? What? No, I believed it. I'm like, oh, what? Like, like, don't you dare go take a shit, man. It's like, you go back there. She's going to get your dinghy good. What? It's like Scary Movie 2. Remember that? with the... Yeah. Oh, it was enchiladas. Oh. No, 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 no. no it was, it wasn't at the part where uh, Tori Spelling or whatever was 
getting a, getting on with the the demon or the invisible man or something like that. Was it Tori Spelling that played I that think role? So yeah. Anyway, uh, I guess I should say something about this movie before I get back into better, more interesting topics. This is ridiculous. So every, so the primary crew of friends, they're all infected. They got the, the glue on their yeah. faces. And they start throwing up at the lunch table and just vomit on this crazy guy in the face. And he's just like, oh. And they're like, they just vomited. And they're like, oh, I'm going to keep eating. They're like, they, 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 there's a lot of jokes. They're making jokes like, oh, yeah, I'm really hungry. Watch, they're just going to go eating after they just vomited up a bunch of Campbell's soup, dude. That's so funny. He thinks it's funny, huh? Just eight, yeah. It, it's it's stupid. It's stupid funny. And this guy's got Pop, just gabs. He's big in. Yeah, he looks like he's got leprosy or something. Like, look, he's got those like warts on his hand. Those look like some something funky. Like he had a bad day. Got uh, the monkey pox or whatever they call it. Yeah, that's 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 more appropriate, I guess. But uh, yeah, so everybody's kind of getting sick and they don't know why their skin's falling off. And they they kind of explain it like, uh, you know, it progresses as fat. They're going to maybe I'm jumping ahead. The guy, the doctor, he's like doing all the research. He looks into like information on where this stuff came from, the canister. He finds some information. He's scrolling through that website that literally looks like the website that I made in high school and I got reamed. No that's story. Did, did we already see the part where the guy's like on the web? I don't know. He's re- he's digging into like where this stuff came from. And and I, I think we probably missed it. We talked over it. But he pulls up like stuff on the website and he like finds a, a, a link to find to talk to somebody. And it's one of those things where he emails the contacts who has experience with what happened. I think it's oh, the son okay. of the guy. Anyway, it's one of those things where it's like an old school chat room and he sends an email and the guy messages right away. Like, what is he got? Is he just sitting yeah. at his desk? waiting for a message that might never come anyway the website he goes on it's the shitty you could tell it's the shitty website someone just threw together for this movie. geo site or something yeah it's really shitty and it reminded me of the website i made uh in mr lafon's class I'll, i don't care there's a lot of there's probably other lafons out there but mr lafon no. remember him he was uh in middle school it's central Sorry, I'm giving away too much information. But in middle school, yeah, it was eighth grade, actually. And Mr. LaFond was in the, the computer class. And our project was to create a website. And it had to be so many words. It had to have, it had to have so many hyperlinks. We had, to have so, we had to have a topic, so many pictures. You know, thinking back on it now, it was pretty rudimentary yeah. stuff. But I never had a PC growing up. I never had a computer mm-hmm. growing up. And I was in, like, a classroom with... I'm going to say their name rhymes with Spory, Splicken. Yeah, yeah. Guys like that who were yeah. rich. They they grew up in like neighborhoods like Applewood. And whatever. Yeah. They had money. All their parents were money people. And, you know, your uh, we'll just call him Fake Laurelson. These guys yeah. had money. We'll call him Fate Cryapa. These guys had money. And, and I didn't, right? So it, <laughs> am I doing good? Yeah. I know everybody you're talking about. <laughs> That's a that's all I need. But anyway, so you know, uh, we lived in our school district was we weren't exactly M North, but we weren't M we weren't M West. But we we were okay. But we kind of our district was it was kind of yeah, split in the middle. You could have half. like you had like you could have poor kids and you have the yeah. rich kids. And so anyway, I was in one of these classrooms, and Mister Lafond just assumed we were all on the same page and all these people are just like flying, you know, fucking Forey Frickinell is like just fucking flying through it. Like fucking, uh, cause they all had yeah, computers at yeah. home and they just, this is all second nature. I didn't know the, I didn't know how to type then I was like, I, I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still typing like that. And anyway, I did the best I could cause we had to present. It was like the big project of the, the, the yeah, semester yeah. or something. And we had to go up there and present it on the big. Uh, they don't even have those anymore, like the projections, mm-hmm. dude. I miss those. But uh, anyway, and everybody's going up there, dude. I'm watching like Forey Frickin' L and stuff go up there, and they're actually they're blowing me away. Oh, really? Websites like what? Yeah, like well, maybe. But yeah. back then, it was like what? It was making feel really. I was like, please don't call me. Yet. Like, yeah, you know, you're always like waiting if they got to split it to two yeah. classes, like. Please let the bell ring and I have to go next time because I cannot do this. And uh, anyway, I, after watching a slew of these presentations that were amazing, 
I go up there and I, you have to believe mm-hmm. me. I was the poor kid. I could have taught that class anything. I could have taught him how to make spaghetti and mix all kinds of Kool-Aid. Great Blue Dini, I'm your guy. Because that's yeah. what I knew. The poor shit. And I go up there. I tried my best, man. And my website. I, what was the website about? Of, I mean, what, what did you have? I don't even remember. I don't like even Metallica remember Like Metallica website but or something? No, 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 no. I wasn't anything like that. I don't think we could do it, stuff like that. I, there, was, there was parameters we were working with. Uh, but let's just say it had like for example i think it had to be like so many pages Mm -hmm. three pages five pages whatever okay i cheated by making my text big to make to fill pages faster and stuff like that but like i was really struggling man i was really struggling and this guy i didn't feel like this guy had i had this support in helping me through the project and so i think i did pretty good considering my my skills i think i had like only a couple of links instead of like uh maybe i was missing one or two and maybe my subject wasn't the coolest and like yeah it looked very bad dude like when you saw what i went up against and i had like the blow up old man font dude just like to to pad it out after i got done giving my presentation i'm already like fucking nervous dude sweating bullets talking in front of because i know it's shit i know all these people are brilliant and all their stuff looks amazing and then i have to go up there looking like the sped um and then i i get done presenting it crickets no claps Mr. Lafon doesn't say anything after I get to like, and that's my, that's my website, you know, cause Mr. Fawn be behind yeah. you. Right. And I'm like standing up with the pointer and then a moment of silence, dude, you could cut through the tension. This is what I hear from behind me. I'm just going to go out on a limb here and assume you didn't make the honor roll this semester. Like, <laughs> Mr. Lafon said that Mi- Mr. Lafon said that I was like, and I'm standing at the head of the class. Like, oh. oh man! And I was just—I was humiliated. He was behind me. I didn't look at. It. I'm like, I'm just like, I, I should. What a thing to say to your kid, and, a student. Yeah, that's funny, dude. I went. I went home and I told my mom she wanted to fucking have his job. Oh really? And I was like, well, I told her after. I didn't. I didn't tell her right away because I I wasn't gonna do that. But no, in hindsight, if I would have had the balls I have now, I'd be like, fuck you, motherfucker. You're teaching at a fucking middle school in the Midwest. You're. He looked like a. I don't know. He looked like a guy. He looked like a nerd, dude. Like a he's one of those old school nerds that probably had like a, um, you know, like an Apple II and all, you know, these old ass or Coleco mm-hmm. vision and all this shit. But just dude, I he he had like creepy Jeffrey Dahmer I glasses. Think, like I think I remember man. this guy now. A big, tall, yeah. fat, kind of yeah. kind of big dude. I just like pocket protector. He just looked like one of those old school nerds, like first wave generation computer geeks and. I just wish I could go back in time and be like, you fucking asshole. Yeah. And and I and I was just like a shy kid, you know, whatever. I was like I was, I was like embarrassed of like I I felt like I was getting owned already with all that stuff. If I had the confidence I did now, I wish I could uh you ever think about that? Like if I could take I my adult brain would... and and go back to the, the you of then with your like mature brain, oh dude, I I would have I would have turned around and I would have called them out and fucking I would have what would you have done? Sent me to the office and got me expelled? I would have been like, all right, I'll call your bluff, bitch. Wait till I, wait till I tell him what you said to me. We got witnesses. You know, like, you fu- you fucking put me down in front of everybody. And you call me an idiot. <laughs> like, it's like, well, I, I, know, I mean, I, I got guy. sent to the guidance counselor because I freaked my teacher out for the poem I wrote just because it was called The Dripping of the Blood. The, yeah. I remember. What year was that? What uh, year was that? I think it was it was in high school. I was a sophomore or junior, and they yeah. they, they thought I was like <laughs> a f- like a well, slit wrist. I'm walking like around. Like, oh, they had like a nightmare and a cry shirt out. and day of the dead zombie shirts and stuff like that. <laughs> and then they they like they were really worried about me, so they're like, uh, I had to go in there, and I'm like, you know, they're trying to see if you know I have any like mental problems. I'm like. Don't you see, Mr. Vice Principal? It's a cry. <laughs> death, death, death. Part two. Part two. Yeah, it, it was it was just like that. And I was like, no, I'm just I'm just a fan <laughs> of horror films, you know, that sort of thing. And I think I had to go back like two or three times just to make sure that I wasn't like losing my mind or something. But I was like, no, this is just the way, you know, I wrote, wrote but uh, the poem, I got some help from some other guy that in the class, he was a big uh horror fan as well kind of a weird yeah kid, but... no it's 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 really stupid that's like 
Tipper yeah. Gore bullshit mentality. Yeah. Like, oh, he's the kid listening to the heavy metal. He's got problems. Yeah. Like, I don't care. Our t- our teacher, Miss McCain, remember when I put on, she was really cool. And she would let us like put on music and stuff with the stereo. Remember when I put on Alice and James, like, dude? And it was the devil's music. It was I, it was I Stay Away. So it's got a really like pretty verse, no, mm. chorus. But then it was like, oh, I, yeah, mm-hmm. in the verse. He's like, she, she, she couldn't turn that thing off fast enough. Like, get that off my stereo. Like, what? Because it did sound like secular, like, like whole seance, I guess. Uh- <laughs> and then she goes back to Richie's music, uh, the Pink Floyd. Yeah. All right. So uh, where are we at in this piece of shit? So, uh, yeah, they're, they're quarantined. The doctor, we just saw him uh, talking to him because he's got him quarantined. Like I said, he's going to send in the suits. And uh, oh, the girl, this is the big uh, revelation. They pulled her out because they did uh, mandatory like like mm. testing. And uh, she tested positive for pregnancy. The worst oh, STD, yeah. right? No, I'm just kidding. No, but she's like pregnant. By the way, they never explain it. Why she's pregnant. Is that supposed to be Brooke Hogan? That's not Brooke Hogan. Is that Brooke Hogan? Is that young fat? It Brooke might Hogan? be. I don't know. It. That girl looks a lot older than Brooke Hogan probably should have looked then. She's only in her thirties now. It could be one of those things that's like a rumor that just you know it's just popping up online. I don't know, but anyway, uh, yeah, she's pregnant, and because that's a big rule here is they don't have sex. Why? I I don't know. Whatever. It's stupid. Keep them apart. But like the doctor, the friend. This reminds me of like the ringer, dude. It's like why are all these like special people like hanging out together? But the doctor like lets them have conjugal visits. Mm-hmm. Cause they don't like co-ed and they're in love with each other. He proposes to her like, well, they're getting married. Uh, you know, cause the, the guy is going to get on parole. He's going to get out, but like his, his girl's not going to get out yet. But anyway, she's pregnant. They're going to strap her down and you're going to see the creepy guy, like the Terminator guy, like licks the face that, 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 that dude with the mm-hmm. stash, you know, he's going to try and get to the bottom of it. We'll see. It's real riveting stuff. Oh, this is where he's apologizing. Hey, I, I'm sorry. I should have did that. And he's like, don't, don't beat yourself up about it, pal. I would have did it, too. Uh, like, these guys are all infected, vomiting, peeling off Elmer's glue off their skin. Like, oh, man. I'm telling you, I would have been like, you're dead. If we make it out of this alive, you're dead. If I turn first, I'm eating you first. I mean, and it was it's all filmed here in this poor man's one floor over cuckoo's nest. Uh, so. Yeah, it really is a poor man's cuckoo's nest. You think this really was a mental hospital? No. Or they, like, just makeshifted it? It looks like a. It does look like a halfway house or like a, bo- a center for youth or something. I don't know. It looks like a halfway house or maybe a school even. or hospital or. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. That's you know what that's called. Notice their eyes are solid black silhouette. That's called production value. And there's this this movie well, has no contact lenses. Yeah, cheap contacts. It's production. value. Um, So this is available if anybody wants to buy it on ebay it looks like you can buy it for as low as 6.99 there you go man you don't have to why wait for me to find a copy that's in a landfill somewhere now just buy oh, a copy you can, you can import it a uk import a blu-ray of it if you really want it oh it's got a blu-ray uh, uk blu-ray for 25 bucks same cover no. cover was a total bait and switch because like to to an idiot, the cover kind of. I cool. I thought cool. the cover looked cool. That's why I was interested in it. Like you, you don't know any better. You see yeah. the font, you see two, and you see like a very day of the dead looking cover. I'm like, oh, you don't. If you're young enough, you don't know any better. Like, oh, is this? Oh, is this legit? This looks. That's what they're banking on. They're banking for casuals to go and be like, oh yeah, I gotta buy this. I, I like the first one. You must really love zombies if you buy this movie. But yeah, I almost did until Children of the Living Dead got me. Silhouette wouldn't pay shipping for this. I mean, yeah, I, I don't know. You guys ever have stuff like that that just goes missing and you don't know where? All the went? time. I have so much stuff. So I, I hadn't thought about that movie in forever until Todd and I were talking about it when he was here. And I went looking for it. I'm like, where is it? Because when I moved out to Arizona, gosh, 10 years ago now, which is crazy, I didn't want to take all my movies. So I, I traded in all my, because I was already on the Blu-rays. I took my Blu-rays, but all the DVDs I cashed in, I, I traded them in got a couple of video game carts and called it good. But the only DVDs I saved were the titles that were out of print at the time. Like I have a flapper case of showdown little Tokyo that since has come out mm-hmm. on Blu-ray, but at the time it didn't. And, you know, I had some like uh B action movies. I took 
and then I didn't I didn't trade in any of the horror stuff unless I had dupes. Oh, it. so I I I guess it's possible I accidentally left in Day of the Dead too, but I I don't think I would have made that mistake. I fine tooth combed everything and just so to my knowledge I brought it with me and I even kind of felt in my heart of hearts that I seen it at some point, but I've moved like four times in Arizona, five times mm. I've moved a lot. So I've been here. So it's just funny how like some stuff just doesn't make it for whatever reason. And then I had what else? Oh, the other day I, I collect, um, I, I really toned down my toy collecting. I just don't have room for it. But the one set of toy line I will collect because they don't release much of them is that Spider-Man animated series line that Marvel Legends yeah. is putting out because they have them in the VHS Spider-Man boxes like in the old days, like the cartoon. They were so cool. And they were the two packs. I I bought the last one they put out, Dr. Octopus and uh, Aunt May. Mm -hmm. And I don't have it. I was like, where is it? And I I just like, am I miss am I Mandela affecting this? I pulled up my receipts. Yeah, like I, I'm not misremembering. I I had it. I here's the day it got delivered. And I'm like, and I remember even seeing it. I remember touching it. I hadn't opened it yet and posted it, but I couldn't find it. And I, so one of two things happened. They delivered it and they misdelivered it and I didn't catch it. But that's not like me. When I get an email notification of delivery, I I go check the mail. Um or I really I, I just watched like an unboxing video because there's a couple of toy collector YouTubers I watch where they'll unbox it. Like maybe I'm misremembering seeing it so well because I watched somebody else unbox it and I never actually had it in my hands or I somehow accidentally put it in my my toy storage, which is under my stairs. But that's not like I guess it's possible I did that, but I don't I don't know. But it pisses me off because I think it's sold out now. And if I wanted it again to complete the collection, it would cost me like 60 bucks and can't do it. Yeah, I, I lose everything, it seems like. And I don't know. I mean, a lot of, a lot of the stuff, my T-shirts growing, you know, my horror shirts, my I wish I would have had a lot of those stuff now so I can flip them for some coin because, you know, sell all those old Metallica shirts. And oh, dude, I could go on and on about the merchant, the shirts yeah. I lost. It blows me away that I still have that Metallica rebel shirt, mm -hmm. rebel shirt, the that I wore like all the time in middle school and high school. Like I beat that thing dead. I still have that one, but I've lost every other shirt that I've had, but I've had that shirt since the seventh grade. Oh, wow. And yeah. And I still have it and it's an extra large. So I can actually still wear it. <laughs> you know, it's, I, I was wearing like big shirts did as a kid. It, oh yeah. Like the box thing. shirts were huge. You know, what's starting to come back is baggy pants. I, I see everybody wearing like, like celebrities. So I'm like, God, skinny jeans must be out again. Some baggy pants are probably coming back. Oh, what's old is new. It all comes back around. Yeah. hundred percent. So once khaki uh, pants comes back around, I don't think I'll jump back on that train. Whatever. You still, you're going to dust off the box. I'm no, sure you still have I had khaki bed, shorts dude. for work, but no, I don't have khaki pants. No. silhouette still doesn't sound as bad as the super shredder incident what was the super shredder incident could you remind me is that when i was looking all over the place for that super shredder all around town and i couldn't find it are you talking about that like a, like, like maybe like four or five years ago four years ago i don't recall what you're uh, referring to remind me i'm curious i had to give up dude i collected alien stuff i just had to give up there's just so much alien stuff and now they got the alien romulus line coming oh, out from NECA. Cool, and of course right? Yeah, but like I just I have to call it somewhere. I can't I've I you know, I was collecting all the xenomorphs, you know, even up through like Alien Covenant. I've got all the different all and I'm just like, dude, I can't just keep buying because then they I could say, well, I'll just buy the one and I'll say fuck you to all the variants because they'll like release color variants and all that. But I just I just have too many aliens, dude. And they look so awesome, <laughs> but I can't Yeah, and I, I kind of went through the same thing where I was collecting a lot of toys at one point. I think it was like Eh, pre-covid to covid and then i i can't do it man i can't oh yeah you're right so when i was searching all over town for it i was having a good time hunting that was the the, the turtle hype for neca has died down but like for a few years there a couple years ago man it was the thing all the toy groups were hyped up and every time there's a new neca drop for turtles everybody target got the exclusive and then you didn't know if your target was going to have it. Everybody's going around town. This this is going up all the way up until like two years ago, trying to see if you could find it. And if somebody got lucky and their target had a whole bunch of them, but everybody on one side of the country was suffering, 
they would just buy them all up and scalping them and it was that whole thing and i couldn't find it and he said uh yeah the guy was buying them in bulk no i, I got to one place in the walmart <laughs> It's burning down because I got to one place and it was like my fourth Walmart that day, and they kicked everybody out of the store before I can get to the toy section. Like, but no, I just got to look. I just got to look. I got to look at all. No, Shredder. The, the the movie line of NECA was at Walmart. The animation line was Target, so I was at Walmart, and I remember I was like, no, yeah, because somebody on like a group said this location had some, and they wouldn't let me go because there's a crazy guy that came in with like Molotov cocktails and set like half the store on really? fire. Yeah, and they had like they, they were kicking people out, and I'm literally I remember I was like arms reached the toy section, but can I just look? I just got to see do you have it. No, I was like no, you got to go. No. So Fine. some history behind these the directors, uh, the director and his co-director, which his name's yeah, tell us James about and James Dundelson and uh, who's the other Anna Clavel. So I did some research into what they're actually doing now, and they were producers slash directors uh, for that that company we were talking about earlier. It looks like I just found them as of now. They have a new company called Blairwood Entertainment, and oh, they film a uh, cock porn. No, they so now? they're so they're basically it's a media production distri- distribution company servicing glo- the global markets. Some of their new acquisitions are some of these you might have heard of. The Final Terror. You you, you would know it by the cover. Hellhole. Mm. So these these were oh, these were both uh, I believe these were both Shout Factory titles. So now they have these. Mm. Cue the Winged Serpent. That, that was also one as well. So Yeah, okay. I see that everywhere. You ever watched no, that? No, I haven't. No, I just, I've never seen it. It's just one of those covers I've seen a million yeah. freaking times. But, yeah, it looks like that they have a new uh, distribution company. So, as of now, they are working. He, I also found that he, he does, like, a podcast. Or he did for a couple of years about, like, uh, raising his kid or something like that. I, I, sent, I sent you a, a video of him. And he was doing like a, zom- yeah, I get a, a zombie, you know, what would you do during a zombie apocalypse or something like that? And, uh, it's, you know, I, I was just curious about who these people were and if they're still working. I mean, they're they're higher. I mean, like I said, I don't think they were the business behind this movie. They were just taking the paycheck. Right. Oh, yeah. So they have classic titles of Day of the Dead. So they still have Day of the Dead, the rights to Day of the Dead, the original Romero one. Mm. which could be why we never saw it on 4k this time uh but they, but they let shout factory have it for blu-ray but that was what that was a long time ago 2015 for no it was 2012 i don't remember but that came out after this movie came out yeah. long after this movie yeah. came out. so they must have leased it out or something you know, I don't know. How does how do they buy this? How do they acquire I, this? I, I, Who sells it? I don't know. K- Kentucky Fried Movies, another one they have. Oh, they have yeah. that. Okay, that's a big one. Oh, oh, this has all their catalog. Wow. Okay. Hey, Silhouette says he's confused. Welcome to the club. He says, "Does this movie take place in a time loop? It starts with the hospital going to shit. The thermos is dropped in the grass five days before slash later. We're at the hospital again." And he's like, "So is this like some brilliant way of saying the movie ends where it began? Uh, the thermos ends up in the grass over and over and over again. This timeline is fucked up. The loop back. Yeah, it, you, I'm just gonna give him credit where it's not due and say it is like you said, cerebral and intentional. But Bill Nye here. Oh, uh, uh, yeah." Here's a link on, on their website, and it's for Day of the Dead 2 Contagium. It states that the movie's 85 minutes. I don't, I don't think that's correct. Yeah, and they have a request, uh, request availability, so we should request. An interview? No, no. Why are, why we, are we, we not trying to get put this out guys. in 4K, man? Wait, why are we not trying to get these guys to do commentaries for shitty movies? They, these people need to speak, own up, account, be accountable. I feel like we could have got the director for, I doubt he would be like, 
I would love for it. Like, hey, you want to come and like air out your grievances? This movie on on Children of Living Dead, and maybe the director come out. Well, you want to come out? I mean, unless they they don't have a good um, you know, if they're not good sports about it. Like it seemed like the Children of Living Dead guy kind of was like, hey, I'll go on and talk shit mm-hmm. about it. I'll feel like I, I got to make my name look good. Dang, I we should have we should have thought of stuff like that. That zombie looks ridiculous, dude. He's got like a giant. He's a meat loaf yeah. face, dude. Meathead. His whole body is just flat. It doesn't look terrible, but it's funny. So, okay, what I don't understand here is this guy. So he's kind of revealing himself to be a bad guy, right? That's the that's the the guard. He got bit oh. by the girl that was pregnant because we talked over it, but he was like he had her chained up like Sarah Connor, and he was like, Oh, you're pregnant. He's like, Oh, he's like, they're not gonna let you keep the baby. Right, they're gonna make. You think they're gonna let a wacko look? You keep the baby. They're gonna put it for adoption. And he's like, "But you know, maybe I can make this report disappear if you make it worth my while." And and she's got like fucking glue all over her face, and she's sick and vomiting, and he's still trying to like grape her. It makes mm-hmm. no fucking sense. And then, uh, you know, he's trying to like be aggressive with her, and then she's turning, so she bites him, and then he turns into this, and he looks like Meatwad from Aqua Teen Hunger Force. He Forces does look like Meatwad. And uh, anyway, so a second ago when you had him in the bed, he's been turning, you know, for days. And like I said, they explain why everybody's turning at different rates, right? The guy they talked to was like, well, it's all, it's like you're, it all, it, it aligns with your metabolism. So, you know, how like fat, whatever, science. And the doctor was sitting next to Meatwad and he was kind of like giving his exposition a little bit. And he has this key and I guess he's got a cure. He's like, hmm. Do I give you the cure or do I not give you the cure? I'm like, you're not going to cure this fucking meat wad. Yeah. This guy's like fucking f- flesh is falling apart. Like, I thought they're going to go that route. Like, whoa, is there like a cure and it's going to like turn them back like animorphs? Oh, I'm all better. Surprise me. No, but I'm like, the fact that he was even like entertaining this, like, why is this written in the script? This guy, it's like they wrote this in the script before they decided to really mutilate the guy in the, in the effects. And then they decided to keep the line in the script. Like this guy, I wouldn't have guys off cure. yourself at that point, man. <laughs> it's just, uh, but it's really stupid. Of course, he he took a bite out of him, and he's gonna be a zombie too. And I don't, I still, the friend, the friend of his lover shoots him. I don't really get that. I get it. She's affected, but she's not acting like a zombie yet. And I get it. They're well, like I said, this is just where you uh, use the cop out of Looney Bin because she's the friend of Lori Petty Tank Girl, best friend. And by all accord, she seems to be supportive of their love, the girl and the guy. And all of a sudden, she's like, I sense she's in danger, which she is, you know, the pregnancy, they got her tied up and she's sick. So why does she take a gun and she shoots her lover? It makes yeah. no sense. No sense. They No sense. And all you could say is crazy. OK, but this whole time they haven't shown her to be like Private that kind of crazy. Private pile there. Gomer pile. Okay, you got Meatwad breaking loose now. Bob Saget's just like, uh. <laughs> oh, that was kind of cool. Yeah, it, like I said, there's 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 some effort here and there. I'm not saying it pays off, but there's some effort here and there. I'm just gonna call her Brooke Hogan because uh, look, he just pulls out the look, he pulls that body like it's a rag doll. Mm-hmm. You see him? Like that body weighed like five pounds. Like right, he just flipped it and slapped the wall. Okay, this is the guy. This is the guy he was talking to on the internet. He finds the shitty cheap website. And look, this guy's like some scientist. His dad like ran the pro- the reason why all this happened 40 years ago was his dad. And this guy shows up and look what he's wearing. Lab coat? Oh, no, he's like wearing like fucking I don't know, might as well be wearing like a Marty Moose Bullwinkle shirt. They just they're all they're all dressed like fucking slobs. These guys are scientists, doctors, crazy lunatics, and they all just dress like they rolled out of bed. I dress better than that. I, I don't dress. They're all wearing like fucking novelty tees. Like they all look like they raided. You know what it looks like? It, it looks like they went to a Goodwill and they bought and somebody had d- turned in their entire wardrobe of like their dead goofy uncle who wore nothing but like fucking Dr. Pepper T-shirts. And that the the, the 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 art department, wardrobe department raided it and dressed everybody. They with the yeah, same ran to clothes. Target and picked up a few things, a few novelty tees. But like everybody looks stupid. Nobody, yeah, nobody looks like uh, what they're supposed to be. And they're like lifting up their shirt, like, "Oh man, I got the mark. I got the same mark. 
I don't understand this. I don't know if this is just implying like it's the next phase. Yeah, I think it's the next phase of the the changing, but they all happen to be changing on the same part of their titty, which it almost made it seem like it was like a cult of thorn thing. But no, I just think they're turning. Uh, but the guy's going to come in here, uh, the fat comic book guy from Simpsons, and he's going to explain to him. Like, oh, you guys are still in like the co- the the like the cocooning phase, and the phase has been going on for four years or what? No, no, no. That four years ago is the beginning of the movie. Look, this guy's wearing like a stretched out neck holster. I don't know, man. He just looks like. Look at this doctor. Like they made him put on a. Lab he's wearing coat. jeans as a doctor. Well, they said he's like wear a lab coat from now on. How and, sterile uh, is that? So they. Well, they shouldn't be giving lobotomies. Look at that. That's oh, look at that. That was like a, what was that move? It, it was the Nightmare on Elm Street move. Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, the corridor and the. I don't. I I kind of wish this movie played with like darkness a little bit more. Like turn off the lights. Like cut the power. It's just like you, it, it kind of looks a little stagnant. Looking at this Kmart. That's boring the whole movie. Man. It's just boring. It's it's it doesn't look good. The it's just. I'm not saying it's shot terribly, but it doesn't look good. It's just, it, yeah, the lighting is terrible. It looks like a boring ass Kmart. Look at this guy. Look at this shirt he's wearing. Oh, the peace sign. This is some kind of like, this is like some science engineer guy, like some biochemist dude. He's got all the like answers about the chemical IT, weapon. So. You know? Okay. Well, no, I, I, yeah, <laughs> is it? it is. Well, yeah, it looks like this Kmart bathroom, dude. All of it. I, if I could go back to a Kmart today, I wouldn't. No, do you ever like? We used to. It's kind of weird. I don't we used Kmart to go to anymore. Kmart all the time. Yeah, even me and when you, you came yeah. in, when I was living in an apartment, we we walked over to the Kmart. Before yeah, it closed Kmart, down, you're like, oh, I've been in a Kmart in twenty or ten years. Kmart finally all went out of business. It's been like ten years, but you know, it wasn't that long ago. And uh, they closed the one in in Missouri uh, where I was from. We had one or we had two, and then it became one, and the one went away. No, we had I had one right by my apartment. Then we had another one that was pretty close. I like Shopco. Uh, yeah, they, they just than go- Kmart. Shopco's well, inter- Shopco, entertainment they only have was a lot better than Kmart. But they only have they it don't in have your state more. But oh, they closed yeah, that they down. Shopco. They haven't had that for. Oh, years. that's too bad. I love Shopco and. And the entertainment section they had, it lost all its luster when they mm-hmm. tore down the walls because they used to it used to be enclosed. It used to be in the back mm-hmm. corner of the store, the one by Oakview. Sorry, the one by they used to make it like a corner of the store and they'd wall it in to where it had its own little entrance. And then when you walked in there, you know, it was like its own little cubby and it was dark. It had a cool like ambiance about it and all the, the, the games on the walls. So cool. And the music and stuff would be there, too awesome man and then at some point in the later years of that store they just tore down those walls and just made it part of the general look like kmart like great this is no fun i get a lot of cds from there right, I I was... yeah i i uh good memories of that store that and uh you guys have these all over the place too at least they're midwestern high v's yeah. my best memories man we're going to high v's and getting the little slips for rentals I, I love yeah it. me too Here's... that's where we got everything yeah. Nothing. It was like a red toxic Avengers meat wad running around. And look, we got uh, super troopers coming in. <laughs> look, they got these like Halloween store cop outfits, dude. Like these, even the glasses look like they're uh, like, props. Yeah, from look look at the store. guy in the back. It looks like uh, Richie Valens. <laughs> the Night Stalker, more like it. Richie Ramirez, dude. <laughs> I don't think Richie Valens had a mustache. No, no, who am I thinking of? Lou Diamond Phillips. Yeah, it's, that's uh, I mean Bob, yeah, the Night Stalker. Oh, Richie Ramirez is yeah. the Night Stalker. But anyway, we're gonna get some backstory from this guy. It's not important. Who would put that on the movie. bottom of that uh, part of it? Coffee mug. <laughs> you gotta have a movie. This guy looks just. This guy looks just like this dude that I knew for years in Missouri, and he was. I mean, with all due respect, the biggest geek I've ever met in my life. I mean, he was totally fine person and all that. Really annoying because he's just so nerdy. He's like too nerdy, like uber nerdy. And I remember he was like the living embodiment of the Simpsons comic book guy. You mm-hmm. at least know that, mm-hmm. right? The comic book guy where he's like a parody of like fat uh, man children. 
and he was really large. He looks just like this guy and, you know, kind of had a body odor about him. When he walked into his apartment, it was just wall to wall, ceiling to floor, like anime statues and toys and posters and like swords. Like this guy was never going to get laid ever. And, you know, I like stuff like that, too, but I would keep I, first of all, I decorate a little better and it'd be like my bedroom. I would not you know, you want to have like girls over every now and again. <laughs> and this guy's room vomited. It was like it, it was like an anime stop shop blew up. Anyway, one time he lives in my same complex and I one time my my battery in my car died and I had to go to work. I was like, oh, and my my roommate at the time wasn't around, but he was at work. And uh, he had the he had jumper cables, so I I had to go to the, the nerd's house and knock on his door to see if maybe he would give me a, if, he, if he had cables or if he would give me a ride up the road to to retrieve him. And I open the door, and he opens the door, and it's it's, like it's his day off, and he is in full Sith Lord costume, <laughs> like he's got a black garbs like like Darth Maul dude, and he's got like a black like mask over his face like a ninja, and he's got his Darth Maul double whammy uh lightsaber and, uh, and and he's got like his hair and he looks just like this this fat guy what exactly was he doing and there, like, like filming looks, himself or something look and i said uh like the star wars kid yeah. r.i.p didn't know. he die anyway i said uh is this a bad time <laughs> and he goes no i was he talks like the comic book guy no i was just playing with legos <laughs> i'm like okay and he had Legos all over the floor. He's like, sit. So I, he, he, if, you know, while I'm not there, he's sitting like Indian style, dressed like a Sith Lord, playing Man with child. Legos, it, big time. And I, and I said, and I, I, I pled my case. He's like, sure. Hey, he, he tell me, and he's, and, and he was coming, and he's, he started heading outside. Like, whoa, you're not gonna get changed first? Why? I'm like, okay. And I don't want to be a bear. And I'm like, he takes me up to where I work, yeah. dude. And he drives me up there, and. And I'm like, okay, you wait in the car. I was like, why? I got to use the bathroom. I'm like, oh, God. And he follows me in. And the restaurant I worked at had a giant floor plan. You walked in, it had an open mm-hmm. kitchen, so you could see all the cooks, line cooks. They saw everybody coming in. Big open floor plan. Big, wide, look like a barn. And then I'm trying to, like, keep 10 strides ahead of them so it's not about, not like we're together. And I'm going in there to get my roommate's keys to get in his truck and get his, his jumper coats. I come walking in. Can I give you guys yeah. a demonstration? Let's see it. I'm I'm trying to stay ahead of him, and this is what this fucking guy's doing in full Sith Lord. I'm like this, like God, 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 and he's behind me. <laughs> and I'm just like, God, kill me, kill me. Oh. And they're like, Aaron, is he with you? I'm like, no. <laughs> I don't know who this guy is. <laughs> <laughs> he was he was doing the Star Wars kid, and I'm like, because he, he and the thing is, is I kind of respect these people because, you know, he's just living his mm-hmm. truth, man. He he knows what makes him happy, and he doesn't care who knows. But he in his heart really thinks it's the coolest thing in the world. Where he's like, I'm gonna show up my 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 sword, my lightsaber skills. Like, all right, man, you mm-hmm. do you. But uh, it was just. It's almost like it wasn't real life. Like this guy can't exist in real life, but he does. They exist. Funniest damn thing I've ever yeah. seen in my life. And I was telling my roommate, like oh, some God. people are pretty <laughs> open about their nerd hobbies. Like I'm pretty closed off. Like my my friends, the majority of them don't know. I'm like a huge horror nerd and stuff like that. Like other other than yeah. people online, like you guys, you know, like I'm pretty closed off when it comes to my personal stuff. Dude, he had to stop by a store on the way back, which is fine. He's helping me out. And we go into the store and he uses the force to open the automated oh doors. God. Like of course. Of like, course. God, he like, did. What you, I was like, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> he's like asking for he's like using the force. And he's like serious. He's not like, like even joking, like using the force. Uh he's like, using the force. Like, God, dude, we gotta get you laid. Jesus. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Oh, speaking of getting anyway. laid. I was I was okay, I was yeah, talking to my wife going? the other day and this kind of came up. I'm talking about yearbooks. And in middle school yearbook, oh. you wrote in my yearbook before we were we were we were friends. I mean, we talked occasionally. You're like Did I write something? Yeah, what he's like saying? um you know, you write usually like have a great summary. You just wrote Todd. Stan, you said Stan, Todd. Two it? words for you. Get laid. Yes, I didn't you say did. That. Yes, There's you no did. No way I wrote that. You wrote that. There's yep. no way I wrote that. 
First of all, well, that doesn't sound like me at all, but I'll take your word for it if yes. you have the proof. But that doesn't sound like me at all. But second of all, isn't that funny? That's how like seventh mm-hmm. graders talked. Like we all yeah. need to get laid. <laughs> so, I, I do. I, I don't remember that. That doesn't sound like me, but yep. I'll take your word for it. That's, that's Unless your so brother odd. signed it like that. Uh, Maybe your brother filled it out. I, I, that does not sound like me, but whatever. But remember, uh, <laughs> I remember, okay, I got to do it again. Let's call him, uh, Balan Cronson. Okay. Balan Cronson. He, he signed my yearbook and he's like, remember your dad's a crackhead. What? <laughs> Jeez. I'm like, thanks. <laughs> I, 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 I almost forgot there, Balan. I'll, I'll be reminded when I go home and he throws me down the stairs though. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then, and he's just like, that kid was like, hey, remember you dad on crack? He's like a fucking live action, like Looney Tunes. Yeah. <laughs> so, but anyway. Uh, all right. So the group is all succumbing to the virus. Oh, two days ago. See, we're going backwards again. And they, except for the doctor, they all turned on the, uh, the fat nerd. And they just ate him. They started eating him like a fucking pig. And the doctor's like trying to like, suppress his urges and him for some reason him and the main guy and the main girl laura petty they're keeping their wits about him and like i don't know like they're gonna find an answer or something way you see the ending here soon to me the ending makes no sense hey look when you become a zombie you become a riri you see that face he's doing <laughs> that guy needs to get laid no, just kidding. It's, that's my, <laughs> it's gonna be my thing now i guess that's my thing going yeah. back to seventh grade get laid yeah, i never never that forgot looks that. like yeah, it does I must really love killing zombies. Mm-hmm. Just like I never forgot that. I don't, I don't remember it. <laughs> but you know what's funny? As nerdy as that is, it's not nearly as nerdy as Star Wars guy. I'm telling you, that was like the worst, dude. He had gloves and everything. He had professional. I was like, you going to a party or something? He's like, no. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know what reminds me? What's that movie? Uh, gosh, is that Jim Carrey movie? Yes, man. Where his boss is uh-huh. like having that, that guy. Yes, yeah. Man? His boss. His boss keeps inviting him over for these like uh, Harry parties, Potter like party, Harry Potter yeah. parties. And then he goes to his past and he's like, they're all dressed mm-hmm. like Harry Potter. And that's like that. But at least he had excuse. They're having a party where they're all getting together. And he just would answer the door like that. Mm-hmm. Like, OK, I, I'm sure I could have picked him on another day. And he would have had a wizard like Harry Potter, like glasses. And oh, I'm just, you know, playing with Roblox or I'm playing with the connects <laughs> or whatever. They fucking nerds. Look at this guy. Come on, come around. Don't you want to eat? The Don't you glue on his face, certain appeal. Well, now they're like, <laughs> they're like the brain is that a heart? I don't know what that is. But now you know a bit. Like I don't think the acting is like they're trying more. Like these guys are actually trying to put in a handy performance. There's nobody with any acting skill at all in Children of the Living Dead. There's no range at all, dude. These guys are at least trying. I don't know. I found it more comical. This is like trying to be funny. Maybe. What what's kind of sucks is it's a wasted, squandered opportunity because I mean they could have done something with this set and this location they got, you know they could have did something. It's just a, is this? I don't know if this is shot digitally. I'm sure it's shot digitally because it just looks cheap. But I'm telling you, it would have went a long way if they would have done something to broke up the monotony and had the lights go out or something and had it like just look dark and they could have played with the atmosphere so much better. Well, they they could have got rid of like. You, you know, half half of this movie cut out the middle part pretty much, and just leave the oh, zombie action in there. Make it a short. The movie, the movies. No, well, the, first of all, if you want to keep it a feature, that's fine. The movie's an hour and forty five minutes. Uh, you have the intro of the movie, the first five minutes, fine. But then there's like thirty five minutes of bullshit. They literally could have cut out twenty five minutes of that and just could have like really just sped it up and got us to the movie i guess a lot faster but it's it's trash i mean but they could have done something with the set it's a waste of opportunity like i dude i'll do something with that set give me a give me a school or whatever this is and we'll do something with it like a little bit of lighting this could have been silent hill dude look now everybody now all the crazies that's, in the that's lunchroom, cool you always see them in or, oh, yeah, that's cool now they're all eating now but they're all sitting at their lunch tables just eating yeah, flesh that's funny and that's a that's the director right there oh Looks like Corey G, skinny Corey G, oh. dude. Big Kahuna movie reviews. Remember when Corey G uh, was promising you a job interview or Me? something? Didn't he? Might have been you. 
yeah you're like pissed off at him because like you you like giving him a hookup with like a job contact or an interview or whatever and something about like he didn't come through with something or he left you hanging i don't remember exactly all the details you were on the job market at okay. the time but anyway whatever that was skinny cory g would it be funny if we like contacted the director that was cory g like yeah it's me oh god i i, I couldn't remember? get uh what's lorenzo Lamas in this movie so i had to settle for some of these third-rate actors look at her that's the friend she's full uh zombie now she's like i smell nerds <laughs> <laughs> chum in the water type thing once again something with zombies when you turn to a zombie it changes the, the structure of your skull and they get like protruding like eyebrow bones and cheekbones i don't know what the deal is there look at that doesn't she feel like an idiot dude that chick right there now like watching this like yeah there's i am just kind of like terrible terrible zombie makeup I wish I could find I wish I knew what that zombie movie I told you I was in a long time ago was called because I would look for it somewhere because I bet you would have to be somewhere on YouTube or like uh, where Vimeo was it from something I just or, I mean like where where was it shot well the Springfield Missouri area but I don't remember where it was it could have been like an it could have been like an outskirt it could have been like a Republic Missouri or like a Marionville Missouri but it was in the Springfield greater area somewhere and uh, I remember the guy's name was, like I said, Aaron, Aaron Durst, because he had my first name and the living legend Fred Durst's last name. And it was just a match made. He had my name, basically. Oh. That's the name. If I, if I married Fred Durst, that would be my name. He stole my name. Hold on, dude. Let's see. The bald guy with pigtails like Sean Gunn and Trump Hill and Juliet. <laughs> I don't even know if that movie ever got finished. I mean, I'm just assuming it did. But, like, for all I know, it just – after we done filming it, because maybe he never – like, she's going to – she's – okay, so we're getting close to the end. This end makes – this 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 wrap-up makes Aaron no Durst sense. Is Aaron the bald guy from Columbia, Missouri? I He might be bald now, but Columbia is not far – I mean, Columbia is on the other side of Missouri, but that's close enough. Like, maybe – like, maybe he – it's possible he could have been from Columbia and he might have just been in Springfield to go to MSU and maybe went back, you know, like, where'd you find him? Uh, I just Googled him. Facebook popped up. Okay. Let me see. Uh, I'm going to look him up. Did you type in uh, Missouri? Yeah. I typed in Aaron, uh, Aaron Springfield, Missouri. That's not him. He's too old. That that's not him. This guy's like my age, and he he was like skinny, and that's not him at all. Yeah, I tried looking for him one time, and I couldn't find him. Yeah, he did now. Um, oh yeah. But anyway, so you still had th this chick just got. She just gave the come up to the slut, and she you know this whole this whole hospital has been ransacked and getting killed by zombies, and she's still like just getting medicine, drugs, and she's fine. Nobody's eating her somehow. And uh, but the friend who she was picking on earlier ate her, you know, tore a new one. And we have Meatwad here. He looks like a uh, Toxic Avenger mm -hmm. Meatwad, Toxic Meatwad. And it's funny because he was their bully, right? These guys didn't like him. He was the guard. They're gonna fucking turn on him. What's funny is before they were acting like one of us, you're one of us, but they're more human than that. And and they're like, hey, they remember that they don't like him and they're picking on him and they're going to rip him to shreds and eat him. And I'm like, wait, do they like flesh or they like zombie flesh? I'm so confused. This is like Corey Feldman. It does. Look, it, that's like what I was going to say. Feldman. Corey Feldman would have been perfect in this movie. It was like Zombie King. dude. Zombie King's the worst, dude. Yeah. You know what? I, I think this is probably better than Children Living Dead. I mean, there's decent practical effects in this, so Yeah, it is a little better. I'm saying Return of Living Children Living Dead is a one out of ten. This is a two out of ten. I'm not saying it's good at all, but there's a little bit more effort here. A hundred percent. You don't have grave robbers coming in with blue t shirts and you have gore. Like there's this movie's PG thirteen, that's what it says. Really? PG thirteen? That's what that that's what it says Ooh. in the description. I don't know if that's true. There's no way it's true. Look at all this blood gore, dude. Yeah, there's no way it's true, but it does say it's PG thirteen. Come to the hospital. That was like Uncle Frank, dude. Bootleg Uncle Frank. That was like Resident Evil. That was like a Resident Evil zombie from Resident mm -hmm. One, the lab coat zombies. Or the dead next and door. Resident Evil One like the dead next door. I, why why are his teeth like 
too low. But uh, in the first Resident Evil, remember how all the zombies looked the same? They all had their white mm-hmm. coats and like the green pants. And then they didn't actually start changing them up until two. But they have more extras in this movie. I mean, there's more of a budget, but oh, look, they're unleashed. This is where we're getting our sequel bait, right? For the third movie. Oh, great. Okay, so she's got the bait. Look, her belly's growing faster and faster and faster. It's like, what's going to happen? What's going to happen? We're going to get some finale. Oh, look, there's like a baby in there. Uh, by the way, we totally skipped over it. There's a really point. Look at Mario Lopez. There, he got bit. Uh, there's, there's, there's a totally pointless like uh, love arc between the doctor and that nurse who's way. Who's, you know, she's kind of like regular town cute. She's not like movie star cute. But I don't know what she sees in fucking Lewis from Red as the Nerds in this. But that kind of goes nowhere. I, I hate fluff like that. Like so, dinner and. You know, the dates. Did she just ask me out on a date? He's like sick. Earlier in the movie, he's like looking up what's going on. He's like vomiting and stuff like that. And she's like still asking him out. And he's like ignoring her. And he's like, Did she just ask me on a date? Dun, dun, dun. I'm sorry. I'm looking for that uh, movie. I think I might have found it. Let me look. Really? I would love to watch it and see me. Unless I get cut. Oh, look at that, dude. See, like that, that, that took effort. Ripped right through okay. his chest, dude. And had the so heart. this came out in two thousand, or this is from two thousand six. Yeah, that's that year. That year, I just watched up. the movie that tonight on DVD. Up. It was originally made for cable movie from two thousand five that was aired on the Sci Fi Channel. The interesting fact about this movie is it was filmed entirely in Springfield in Nixa, Missouri. This wasn't filmed. This wasn't filmed in Nixon. Well, some of, some but of I, it, I, including I, a great deal of scenes that take place in tunnels and basements of a St. John's hospital this, here in Springfield. So mm, it's a good chance to like see it. some of them. Also, towards the end of the movie, they go to the sewer system under the fictional town of Host, Missouri. Send me a link. I doubt this is it at all. This is I mean, an old message this board. Is like sort of, it's undergroundozarks.com. I'll send it to you. Yeah. And th- this is like um, this movie reeked of just kind of generic zombie filming in the woods movie, like very cabin in the woods, very, very cheap. This looks like it actually had some effort to it. And they also filmed a movie called Albino Farm starring Richard Christie and Chris Jericho. Really? That'd be cool. Because. Well, okay. Uh, but <laughs> They're both great. They, it's one of like the local lores, the albino farm. It's supposed to be mm-hmm. haunted. And they actually, somebody actually made a movie on it. And they had those guys. All right. So look, we're, we're reaching the apex of the film here. Everybody's like breaking out. And we have the chick who's still yet to give birth, right? You tell me if this ending makes sense to you, right? Look, so, okay, so the friends are trying to get the baby. The friends who are all now fully zombified, they're like, oh, give us the meat. We want meat, and they want there to eat. Like, join us. Like, eat, you'll, you won't be able to turn back once you try the meat. And they want the baby, and the, 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 the father, presumed father, even though he denies it, they never, they never tell you who the baby is. Oh. Uh. Because they deny it, like, because they're getting in trouble. Like, they're not supposed to have sex. And they're like, and he's like, I, he the doc the doctor comes to his aid like it's my fault you know they're actually getting married but he's like he talks to him in private he's like it wasn't me they never they never tell you where the baby came from it's just like a plot hole i don't know if they're insinuating that she got graped but i don't know it's just it's so stupid look here's the end they're trying to get his baby mama to eat the eat the heart or whatever and they want to kill the baby he's grabbing the gun you think he needs to go fucking go to town and shoot his friends like no i gotta protect my woman protect mm-hmm. her honor while everybody on the outside is getting ransacked by zombies right it's gonna lead into the epidemic of the third movie but let's see how this movie ends todd okay look okay they're fighting them off fighting the doctor we got uh umba macumba you remember that show umba no. macumba on disney channel uh i don't know but we got this guy <laughs> fighting off the doctor and once again he's just toying with her just kill her already let's see how look our big hero grabs the gun grabs the gun
and he kills himself. Why? It took him that is long. Is it maybe something? Is it something like? But you think like he's acting like he wants to save his woman. Huh. Like why don't you? I get it. Maybe it's like, oh, we're done for. Why don't you put your woman out of her misery? Why you kill yourself? And okay, you're gonna be munch food. You're gonna get chewed up, and the baby's gonna get. It makes no sense. And I just, I also don't. Um, I don't know if they're implying. I don't know why they cared so much. I, I don't. It, it, maybe it's some of that psychic shit that never went anywhere, like the psychic hive. Because there was a part. There's one part. He was like kind of like speaking to him telepathically. Like there's so there's there's a few half baked ideas in this that never go anywhere. And I, and I was thinking, like, what well, was it like a hive mind thing? And if so, why is it just him connected to his, like, three cronies, not everybody? It makes no sense. But that's it. That's the movie. Look, it ended. Oh. He killed himself, and then they cut to more scenes of people getting eaten up outside, and it ends. It's got a terrible ending. Yeah, look, and it said yesterday. So that just implied that the next day, zombies were still eating the public. <laughs> End credits. Yeah, yesterday. God, these timelines so are ridiculous, dumb. man. It, it's really no ending. It, that's what, yeah, what? No ending? It really didn't have an ending. It was so weird. And, uh, yeah, and all you could do is assume it was baby grape, but they don't ever bring it up. It's just so odd. And, yeah, the whole yesterday thing, I, if it happened once, I would say it's a mistake. Either some idiot really thought that's how you do it or an editor put them in the wrong spots because these might make sense if they came before the scene right but are they really just thought they were being big brain like let's be cerebral let's like fuck with people's minds i i just think it was just a but, cash and they really didn't care like okay how can we just end this stupid movie let's just kill them yeah, it was pretty terrible. Uh, Silhouette says, God awful movie. So, what do you give it out of 10, Silhouette? And did you actually watch Children Living Dead? Or what's that's all I care about. What's better? Let's compare shit to a I, you, I think you turned me on it on onto this. I, I would give this a two out of 10 because it's got half has, a little bit more effort go, gore to it. And it's actually interesting. Negative 72 out of 10. <laughs> no, I, you're, you're right about the two out of ten. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just trying to give a little credit where it's due. I mean, like, I know it, it's trash. It doesn't matter if it's under a five. I don't care to watch it ever mm -hmm. again. Anyway, that's just how I am. Uh, but <laughs> let's see. The that editor never worked again. I don't, I don't imagine. Oh, Doctor Giggles never bothered with either of these remakes. Well, I don't know. So. The Day of the Dead remake, and then there was the Day of the Dead Bloodline, which is a sequel to the was it a sequel to the remake or was it unrelated? I think it was a sequel to the remake. And you know, it really confused me when that came out because they had Ving Rames in it too. I'm like, wait, Ving Rames was in Dawn of the Dead, and now he's mm -hmm. in the Day of the Dead remake, and he's just playing this different guys. So I'm like, okay. And Dawn of the Dead actually had a budget, was a huge hit. Um, but yeah, this is like uh, I don't even know if this is a remake. This is one of those f movies that could have been a totally different movie, and they just slapped the name on it after the fact. But since they own the IP, it sounds like they commissioned like, "Hey, we want we want to make a Day of the Dead two or whatever." We'll, we'll be taking a break from these shitty movies, though. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for sticking with us the whole time, uh, Silhouette. Yeah, we have to take a break from the shitty movies. I feel like next week we have to do some really fun stuff that we're excited about and that we know a lot about. Just can have a great time just chopping it up over because, uh, you know, I had to sit there and take a break and tell you about stories about Jenny Rogers playing with our dinghies in the boys bathroom and, you know, and all that good the stuff. ghost, the ghost of Jenny Rogers, the ghost. The Ghost of Jenny Rogers, dude. I'm going to make a movie called The Ghost of Jenny Rogers. I'm going to take the lore and bring it to life. And it'll never see the light of day when they find out the premise is about an adult ghost that plays little boys. To what, little Smokies what about the, the ghost of Kenny Rogers? That was a Kenny Rogers chicken, Go dude. Yeah, <laughs> the Mad yeah. TV. Mad TV skit. Well, anyway, uh, let's see. Yeah, we got. Uh, I'll stick around for the end of the credits. We got a few more seconds. Doctor Giggles, what's up, man? Did you just pop in late or what? He didn't want to watch this shitty movie. I don't blame him. I don't blame it. I don't blame it at all. Uh, but, but Romero made his own terrible sequels too. So mm -hmm. yeah, I mean Romero, Romero's they're not good. But they're but they're not no, as bad as these. Not at all. Like I, I don't think. I think Survival of the Dead. 
you know, that's, I mean, honestly, if I'm being totally fair, it's like a four out of 10. It's not, it's, yeah. it's, it's a yeah. movie. It's got structure. It's got characters. It's just, doesn't do it it's, but it's a four out of ten it's made competently enough it's got sh- suffers from bad cgi in places and, you give diary probably uh, about a s- six out of ten i didn't think it was that bad i don't i i thought it was okay when i, I first I saw it, it. Yeah, i had to watch it again. since but i liked it like a six out of ten when it first came out. i i wouldn't be surprised if that's at least a five probably today and, but yeah i mean george romero i don't i don't necessarily buy the budget argument Right. It's like, you know, he got the big budget with Land of the Dead and it didn't do well. So he didn't get to make his sequel to that, which left it feeling incomplete. And then he had to go back to making like Dire of the Dead. I don't buy because I think even with like a budget, you can make a good movie. I think just I think George Romero just kind of missed a step in his older age. I just don't think he was the most consistent director. I've been on record with saying that we did a whole month with oh. video rot doing uh, Romero yeah, stuff. I remember that. What was the monkey shines? God, it's always vanilla, dude. Oh, oh, season of the witch, dude. I don't I, mind you season know, of the witch. Vanilla is worse, but season of the witch, I, I, I don't think it's good either. But uh, you, you know, it is what it is, and I didn't like the crazies either. I thought it had its problems, but uh, you know, it just is what it is. But these guys have no excuse, man. They were trying to rip off the great zombie movies, and they couldn't do it, man. Like they don't, they they don't have to worry about not having any gas in the tank, like Romero. Romero can't keep remaking his own movies trying to like move the needle and do something different so respect all these guys had to do was take a sleazy company's money to try and make a fun zombie movie in the vein of movies that already came before it and they i don't know they didn't do it at the end of the day it always comes down to the writing and stuff and the characters aren't likable they tried to make them different but they're just you don't give a shit the humor doesn't land not at all you know pick pick a number any of them but hey guys let us know next week here. Let's we're let's make a vow. Oh, first of all, yeah, let's make a vow. Next week we're gonna bring the polls back and we're gonna pick some fun movies, some good movies that we're gonna have no problem getting excited over. Uh, we need a break. We did two of these shitty movies back to back. We got real lucky with a Haunted Wing because that yeah, actually turned out to be a that was fun fun movie. But uh, let us know what you guys want to see. We will consider it. Uh, shout out. Leave us. Leave us suggestions in the comments because uh, we'll probably do like we normally do where we'll kind of categorize them, you know, where there will be like cannibal flicks, vampire flicks. We'll kind of theme it. Let us know what you want to see or what theme you might want us to tackle and we'll send out voting. But uh, like always, thank you guys for tuning in. Like the video. Please leave a comment. I'm convinced the comments help more than anything. Uh, I know some of you guys are in our discord. We love that you guys are in there and you comment in there if you go out of your way and also comments on the video, it's going to help us out a lot. And if you see us pop up uh, a short or anything like that else, give it a like, help us out. And we are just a, what, like a month away from getting monetized yep. again. Not that that means anything to you guys, but I feel like we've been in prison a bit and I feel Three like it's crippling us a bit. Terrible, man. So I, I, when we go live and we have a show that week, I want it to be special. Like I said, it's not really anything to you guys, but for us, it's going to feel like a victory because we're trying to come out like the Phoenix. And when we come out next month with that, I we're going to be ready. Todd and I have to get to work. I want to come ready with all, you know, uh, shirts and uh, different ways. We want to like uh, launch a uh, YouTube membership. I still want to do all those things. And we've already got all these ideas. We just have to wait till October. So, uh, but hey, thank you. Adios. See you guys. Bye-bye.